Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Happy NBA preseason basketball. Welcome to Hoop Spaces, brought to you by the good people over at slamgoods.com. Head over to slamgoods.com right now and pick up all of your accessory or apparel needs to help celebrate the greatest game on earth, that game being basketball, uh, which is in full swing, ladies and gentlemen, in the NBA preseason and also in the G League as we were given a treat uh, last night as Victor Wabanyama played uh, Scoot Henderson in, in what is now uh, known as the Wabanyama Olympics as so many teams seem ready and apparently ready to tank for the seven foot four phenom. <laughs> like, it's insane. If you didn't watch that game, there's a, a tweet up there with the video highlight package. It's insanity uh, watching this young man play. Uh, so we have that. We have Zion returning. And ladies and gentlemen, y'all, y'all better get ready for some flexing. Zion is back and healthy. And then Holy Knicks. Holy Knicks. After one preseason game, they're back. Are we going to get some bing bong? We'll find out and discuss more. Uh, if you miss any episode, head over to YouTube. You can catch us over there, powered by audiolabs.io podcast coming soon uh the newsletter coming soon and if you go to hoopspaces.com you'll actually start seeing some of the team previews for the upcoming season all right hey the music is getting ready to to clear out man it's been a long day already uh full disclosure under the weather uh i feel sick i think my my son brought home the flu from school or you know one of those little bugs that that always happen around this time of year uh, so knock on wood, hopefully it's not COVID test one negative. We'll take another test later. Uh, Hey, lots to get to. So if you want a mic, go ahead and come on up. I want to give a big shout out to 30 and dubs. Uh, I woke up this morning to some unfortunate news, ladies and gentlemen of Tiffany Jackson. If you don't remember, she had a vivacious smile, uh, out of Texas and I am, I am from Texas. That's my hometown. I actually remember uh, seeing her play when I was stationed at Fort Hood. I had made a trip to uh, the Texas State uh, games that they have uh, for men's and women's. It was held uh, that year in Austin. Uh, Phenomenal player, phenomenal college season, drafted number five overall in the 2007 WNBA draft. Um, A cancer survivor, but unfortunately, uh, the cancer came back and, and she passed away uh, battling cancer to the last available minute as she was also just named uh, first time head coach of a small school, uh, you know, to, to further her love of basketball uh, and, and to her family, you know, and, and I just my heart goes out to you. Um, I have cancer survivors and I also unfortunately have lost loved ones to cancer and, and I know wherever you are, that none of the words can make you feel better. Just know, though, that there are a whole bunch of people that you've never met in life uh, that were impacted uh, by Tiffany's greatness, and we're very appreciative. And we hope uh, that, you know, you find some some solace in her passing, that she's no longer in pain. All right. um, Huge, huge breaking survey uh, news, so to speak. If you like surveys, uh, you know, they do this every year. They talk to the GMs to see the pulse of the league and what they view as the future. And and I tell you what, it's different this year, and I've been saying this for quite some time. I don't think people can objectively look and understand. We are at the beginning of the final transition point of this last iteration or last era of basketball, Uh, and we're here for it. Like, I'm telling you now. Like, this is not a Victor Ribanyama thing. This has been happening uh, since Clay and Steph got together and changed the dynamic of how offense is played at the professional level. It has been happening since LeBron James hit double digits and experience level after his 10th season when Kevin Durant has become arguably the greatest isolation scorer we have seen with the basketball and the professional level. Um Father time remains undefeated, and we are hitting that point where an entire generation of players are going to start 
fighting father time. And, and I think we actually start seeing some of that this year. And so do uh, the NBA GMs. Uh, so if you go to NBA.com, I'll get the survey in a tweet out here. Um, Luka Doncic has now essentially passed Giannis as the biggest franchise cornerstone. And I say that because Luka is nearly four years younger. Giannis is 27, and he's already entering his 10th year. And for some reason, arbitrarily, a lot of people start viewing that as the downside of a player's career. We need to get out of that thinking. The game has changed. Uh, the way players play have changed. He's probably going to be around and dominant for another good seven years, maybe even longer. Uh, Luca has been a pro already for 10 years, and he's going into year five in the NBA, and he's only 23. And I tell you, the international flair to this uh, GM survey is also absolutely interesting. So head over to NBA.com. If you don't want to, don't worry. I'm going to get that up there because uh, we're going to ask some of these same questions, such as what team will win the 2023 NBA Finals? And you'll be surprised because almost double said not the Golden State Warriors. So that's pretty dope. Uh, all right. We did have some games last night, so we're going to get to that in a moment. If you do want uh, a mic, go ahead and raise it. Um, and please, look, if you guys come in and gals come in every day, uh, I, I know you might not be able to come up, but you can be involved. You can be involved in two ways. The first one is, is an ask. Take, take 30 seconds when you have the time, right? Please like and retweet the show card. Uh, we're getting ready for season two. Last year I did 217 episodes. We'd like to get to 220 while providing you some written content as well in long-form features. But it only really works if you support. And, like, I'm not asking for money if you can't afford it, obviously, but you can afford the 30 seconds, hopefully, to like and retweet the show card. What is that? It's generally the first card. It's going to say it's always a great day to talk ball. It'll tell you uh, a basic lineup of what to expect in conversation, and it has the actual card of the show, right? So people can just simply tap it and hop in here. If you want to be uh, involved in the show but you can't come up, there's a chat box down below. Uh, go ahead, hop in there and say good morning. I, I, I usually hop in about 15 minutes into the show, and we'll start adding your discussion points up here as well. So, hey, that's, that's how you can help me continue to help you uh, by providing you the, the content you want for basketball that isn't, you know, uh, the same two people yelling at each other on network television. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get to uh, the scores from last night. And then we'll go ahead and bring some people up. And side note for non-basketball related stuff, big congratulations to Aaron Judge launching his 62nd uh, home run and now a, the uh, sole uh, owner of the American League record. Um, it's really funny, though, because like you hear a whole bunch of, finally, we got a clean guy. I, I, I hate to tell you, some of the stuff that athletes use now uh, would have been considered not clean just 20 years ago, right? So it's funny how time changes certain things. Anyway, I digress. Back to the scores of the greatest game on the planet, that being basketball. Last night, those New York Knicks, I tell you what, everybody's preseason favorite uh, you know, NBA league pass team, the Detroit Pistons, they had a whole bunch of buzz. Uh, they came out looking real good in the first quarter. But, man, those Knicks. 117 96 led by hey who knew RJ Barrett 21 and 5 Jalen Brunson fitting right in as the starting point guard we're definitely going to want to talk uh, some Knicks here we'll get into that the new look Timberwolves without their two big guys they defeated the Miami Heat 121 111 uh shout out to both Anthony Edwards and Tyler Hero already in midseason form 24 for Ant-Man, 22, 6, and 4 for Tyler Hero. Hey, some of y'all don't like that Tyler Hero got that four-year, 130. Too bad. Like, that one, that contract's going to look absolutely fantastic in three years. And, and two, he earned it. He, he's hit 20 points per game, five rebounds, five assists, naming the players in the league 
who have produced more than him in the last 18 months, season and a half. And, and you look at what they're, they're making. Uh, all right, Pelicans. Man, these Pelicans are going to be something else. 129, 125 over the Bulls in the United Center. And they did that without Brandon Ingram. Uh, and Zion Williamson only played 15 minutes. He put up 13, by the way, four for six, five for five from the line. And if you watch the game or the highlights, he's healthy. Like, stop asking, you know, is he going to stay healthy? Is any player going to stay healthy? All that matters is right now and right now he's healthy. Look out for the Pelicans. Like, that's going to be a very dangerous team. And shout out Herb Jones. Uh, Looks like he's going to be in line to possibly get the starting shooting guard spot, uh, moving him down from the three to the two uh, to put Brandon Ingram at the three. That's going to be a very interesting lineup. Uh, Also last night, the Utah Jazz, uh, they they come back after getting trounced by 30 in their opening preseason game. They delivered a thrashing of Portland in Portland, 118-101, and they really pulled away in that fourth quarter. Uh, Jordan Clarkson is going to have as many buckets as his heart can, you know, handle. He had 19. Damian Lillard, 21, 5, and 6 in the loss. But I do want to say um, Portland looks completely different, and I really like the way they look. They looked extremely balanced. Uh, Grant, Lillard, and Simons, I think, are going to be a great trio where you're probably going to get three players averaging close to 20. But, man, Nurkic coming back from from injury, he looks slower, uh, and he looked very needy in terms of trying to grab. Uh, So I'm I'm looking at what his impact's going to be. And then Justice Winslow starting at power forward, uh, I don't know how long that's going to be sustainable. I I just don't. I like Justice Winslow. I hate the fact that he's a tweener. I said it when he came out of Duke that he was probably drafted too high because he's going to fit that tweener. Uh, mold and and much like Stanley Johnson, knock it out of there. Um, but he's he's starting now. Uh, but you might want to look out for a, a player that came on at the end of the season and trend in Watford uh, out of LSU. A little bit bigger, a little bit more athletic. He actually didn't play because he was injured, but you might want to look out for him. All right, uh, there you go. That's just from last night. We'll, we'll talk about some heat basketball as I've got the heat. Um, preview from hoopspaces.com. I'll get that up here. And we'll also have uh, the Hawks up here, I think, as well. All right. Up first, though, we're going to go ahead and talk some Knicks with the uh, fan of Spike Lee, ladies and gentlemen. It says so right there. And that's the Knicks stand. Spike Stan Lee, uh, you are up here. After game one, tell us how New York has returned uh, to relevance in the world of basketball and why you expect R.J. Barrett and Julius Barrett uh, to lead the Knicks to the playoffs. Uh-oh. That doesn't bode well for the Knicks, man. That's that's scary. All right. We'll go to the next one. JFK, what's up, man? Good morning. How you doing? Good morning, morning Chris. Uh, first things first, just want to shout you out. That was a good little preview of the Heat. Um, again, I put in the tweet, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, with us facing adversity, we really were one shot away from the final. So all I'm really hoping for is a healthy season, uh, this season coming up. And I think we will have that just because this off season, all of our guys got specific goals they needed to work on and all of them hit it. Uh, you already know about the conditioning tests, um, before the season, and the guys that put on the jersey are the ones who actually went through the conditioning test. Their their body fat's under 18%, and you know they're ready to go for the season. So talking about last night, um, Eric Spolstra came out with a different lineup. He came out with Bam at the four. So it looks like he may be trying to see something with his two big guys and Omer Yurtsevin and um, Dwayne Dedman. Uh, Yurtsevin had 11 points for 27 minutes. Um, and Deadman only had, like, seven minutes for, like, two points or something like that. So it wasn't really that much produ- um, production from the five. Um, I think Anthony Edwards is is that dude. Uh, he shows he, his motors. He has one of the best motors in the NBA, and I think because of his size, it's kind of, like, unmatched, uh, maybe like a baby LeBron. But Bam had 22 last night off of 25 minutes. 
uh, again, like you said, Hero is in midseason form. I think uh, him getting that money, uh, it affected him differently than how it affects other people. He worked for that money. He he's made he's done what he had to do in the finals and the playoffs. Um, when he was healthy, he made the six man year. Award. He got the six man year award. He deserves that money, and it looks like you know all that rapping he's doing, and he's coming back to show that if he stays healthy, he's one of those players that's not to be played with in the league. Um, I did see a little bit of Kyle Lowry, but they didn't play him that much. Saw more uh, Marcus Garrett. But the thing is, uh, we really try to see what all our players can do. I think um, about 12 people played or even more than that. So it, I don't really take it for granted. It was just a preseason game. Like I told my kids last night, I have to rewatch the game again because I missed some of it because I was at practice. I told my kids it's just a preseason game. You ain't got to miss practice to go see a preseason game. So, um, so far we look good. But um, my last thing I wanted to say about it is that, you know, coming into the season, I think that we're still going to be undervalued. And I think it's going to be like that. But with the contracts that Pat Riley has set up, I definitely see us moving like a Duncan and a uh, Lowry piece if we can. And maybe gra grab a, another piece that fits us. But we're going to rock with this team we have. I have faith in Caleb. Or I have faith in Jovic. And I have faith in even if Ben comes to play the four. So I'm rocking with it. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't I, – I, there were some people who were trying to doom and gloom Miami uh, after last night's performance, and I'm sitting here like, well, Jimmy Butler didn't play. Uh, Omer Yurtsevin looked like he was a 340-pound lineman at the Combine. Uh, Kyle Lowry, although he, he met the body metrics, he, he's not quite in game shape yet. Um, Highsmith, Haywood Highsmith, I thought, had a fantastic game. And, and I think eventually uh, will probably be a look at the starting power forward. Right now, even though Duncan Robinson came off the bench, pretty much every prognosticator uh, have him eating up the most minutes at power forward just because um, Atlanta, I mean, uh, Miami needs to stretch the floor. So, what are your thoughts in terms of what the, the Heat can do this year? If you go to hoopspaces.com and read the preview, you'll see what I gave them in terms of uh, how I think their record will end up. And I think yeah, I, I think you like it. it. It's actually pretty similar to last year. What do you got, JF? So I actually like it too. I think with that four spot, it's going to be a, a great spot. It's a great problem to have because when you have Duncan Robinson, like he has, you said we got to spread the uh, stretch of floor. And I think you're only saying that he might be starting uh, because of his contract of uh, what his value needs to be for the team. Um, well, well, I, I don't think he, I don't necessarily think he starts. I'm saying the, I, I have him listed there, but that's okay. really because that's the general consensus. I mm -hmm. think more than likely Martin stays to start, but then he comes in and plays the predominant amount of minutes. Like at, he'll probably get 23 to 27 minutes per game. I think with 15 to 18 at the four. So I think Spolstra is that type of coach where I, I don't think there's a for sure starter, and he'd probably switch it up depending on the situation of the team they play against and what he might need coming off the bench or what he might need starting. Um, I think both of them add great value. I wish they just fuse together and become one player, but obviously uh, having two players like that, that's pretty good by still, you know, keeping, um, you know, them not tired and whatnot. So I do see Duncan having a great year this year. Uh, they've been talking about – him in the offseason and, you know, getting his shooting form uh, together with Max Drews. And then boys have both have been working. So I have faith in Max Drews already and his in his ability to play. So just if he's working with somebody like that, I think Duncan's going to have a better year. I think he's worked on his dribbling a little bit more and how to create uh, shots for himself besides just um, catch and shoot. Uh, also on defense, I think he's really put pride into to becoming a better defensive player. But Hayward Highsmith, yes, did play a great game last night. Um, he only had seven points, but his defensive presence and his his ability to play bigger than what he is um, is what makes him valuable to his team. And I think if he if he's able to be more consistent um, with his shooting and defending, I see him starting for sure, for sure. All right. I, I just wish that uh, Omar Yurtsevin wasn't as slow as I am. Uh, Chris, I don't know. I think it's that tall guy syndrome. I don't know what happens when you get that tall. Some guys are able to do it, like a KD. Some guys can't do it, it's like a Hassan Whiteside. You know what I'm saying? But apparently, we always get the Hassan Whiteside. Molasses, guys. bro. He's got molasses in his shoes. That's what it is. Uh, uh, any any thoughts or questions for the people who are up on stage about the Miami Heat? Now's the time. 
Uh, we got Jeek Nation, Micah, uh, uh, Nick Stan up here. And then after we move quickly off the heat, we're going to talk to Nick Stan about those Knicks because I, I saw it last night. After game one, you know, more Knicks are like my man Anthony. And they are saying, we are here. We are back. It's the Mecca. And we need to get to the bottom of this. But first off, uh, Jeek, Micah, you got anything for the heat? All right, guess not. Uh, all right. It, oh, wait. I see somebody ready. Go ahead. What you got? Uh, oh, Yo, man. You go. Oh, my bad. I'll... No, go ahead. Go ahead, Micah. Oh, okay. So, as far as the heat, man, I just I don't know what their roster looks like. And uh, as a Mavs fan, you really want me to explain how hard it is to move a overpaid three point specialist that can't play defense. Nobody wants him. I'm sorry. So, like, all I can say is, like, try to get the best side of Duncan you can because he's not getting moved. Don't forget uh, the Dallas Mavericks had at one point uh, Davis Pertan and Tim Hardaway Jr. making the same money playing the exact same role. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And uh, another thing is the Dallas well, you're a little bit low on the on the mic, JF. Uh, Jeep, get in here. What are your thoughts on the Heat? And then we'll go over to Nick Stan. Yeah, um, so it's your boy, Rocky Mr. Magic of Jeep Nation here. And uh, the Heat are a third question mark because we don't know how they're going to uh, to play with – their new with their with their additions and they're still dangerous. We we haven't seen Jimmy Newhair Butler play yet, um, and they they need to get Hero. There's gonna be a lot of focus on Hero early on. They need to get him back into form um, as we see how much they suffered last year without his services come playoff time. Uh, so I really don't think we're going to know who the Miami Heat are um, until Christmas time, but. No one should be overlooking the the Heat. They are, you know, a, a tired Jimmy Butler three away from the NBA Finals, um, and that would be that would have been their second Finals appearance in three years. So, the Heat, they're scary uh, for anybody that's a not not a Heat fan in the East. Yeah, no, I I agree. The the Heat are going to be a very competitive team, and I think. Uh, a lot of the people are going to be discounting them because they just didn't make any sexy moves in the offseason. Uh, JF, go ahead and reply to anything you heard, and then we're going to move over to the next game. Yeah, um, I appreciate what Jeek was saying about, you know, us being a surprise team, but I don't know what the surprise is. I mean, we really didn't add any big pieces besides our rookie, and we really didn't lose anybody besides P.J. Tucker. It's literally the same team coming back from next year. Um we still have the chemi- We still have chemistry uh, more than if you were to say we were to add a Donovan uh, Mitchell or somebody like that. I mean, we have that. We have the, the the continuity on our team. I think that's the that's the you know misunderstanding of the Heat um, and what Pat Riley does. He makes sure that you know his players develop. Um, if he's willing to move pieces, he can move pieces for you know a better piece. But if he's not. Then the continuity with Eric Spoelstra and this coaching staff is still there. I mean, look, you Donis came back for his last season, so I think this is going to be a special season, the 35th season for the Miami Heat, um, with one of the youngest franchises with three rings. So I'm, I'm just going to sit on that and, and just hope for health. That's all. All right. Uh, look, we're going to have all season to talk about the Miami Heat because I do think that they aren't going anywhere. Uh, I, I do think there will be a top six seed. Uh, up next, though, we're going to talk about another team who went to the playoffs, thought they were back, and then all of a sudden realized that they weren't as good as they, they thought they were. Uh, but now they have a point guard. The first time they've actually had a legit starting point guard, and this is from what some of they are saying, in almost two decades. And Jalen Brunson had to take over the lead role. Uh, they have R.J. Barrett coming fresh off an extension, and they have one Julius Barrett, and if you're trying to figure out why I'm saying Julius Barrett, look, it's the truth. It is Juliet Barrett's season. Like, just look up there. They put it up on the screen last night. All right? It's Julius Barrett. It's no longer Julius Randle. That's <laughs> how you know 
<laughs> that Randall's bought in. All right. Hey, great What's win. Going on, Chris? Tell us why we need to take the Knicks serious. What's going on, Chris? Hey, man, I'm not going to sit here and tell anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. You want to say the Knicks are continuing to be a laughing stock of the NBA? I'm going to tell you, you haven't really been watching the NBA too long. <laughs> I'm going to be a recent memory. Uh, look, you, know, you opened up. You said we haven't had a legit point guard since whoever. Look, the last legit point guard we had was Eric Rose. So please let's stop disrespecting Derek Rose, for one. Uh, if we have a healthy Derek Rose just last year, we make the playoffs. Nobody's denying that. Nobody's arguing against that. Um, look. Injuries happen to every team. Uh, that's why we see teams kind of – that's why the NBA is what the NBA is. You know, the NFL is kind of similar to in that regard. But, hey, you have the, some of the top talent uh, that propels things, you know, especially if you're deep. That's one of the things I do like about this team. That's what we showed last night. We showed that we have some depth. Uh, there was obviously some ugly. There was a lot of beauty there as well. Uh, yes, we do have a point guard. Jalen Brunson looked the part. He looked every bit worth of the $100 million that's on a descending contract. Um, so we're going to be paying this man less and less money every year. Give him his back now this year. It's going to be even less next year. Um, you know, Randall started off a little looking like the old Randall. A lot of people kind of had their hot takes right off the bat. We had a Nick Space. Uh, at Nick Spaces, shout out to Nick Spaces, uh, shout out to 32 Bit, uh, Sleeper Wire, any other products that I, I work on, um, and shout out to Hoop Spaces as well, of course. Um, but yeah, uh, this is this is this is a uh, I'm not gonna say this is no our year type of thing, or this is a definitely a year for us to kind of just, um, I, I want to say the rest of the NBA players perhaps to kind of look and take us a little bit more seriously in a way of, uh, you know, may, they, they stringing together some good things. I'm looking, I'm hoping that this team, uh, now I, I do believe we're a little bit, we have a little bit more talent um, than whereas the Nets, you know, with not, not now obviously, but when the Nets were making the playoffs and nobody kind of saw them coming um, and then people started taking them seriously. It was like, huh, maybe I'll, I'll go play for the Nets, you know, and obviously KD and Kyrie got there. Um, but, Look, I'm happy to have some continuity. Um, it's something that Nick fans have been begging for forever. Um, at least, you know, I'll speak for myself. I, it's something I've been begging for forever. I've been wanting to see, you know, a carryover of a team or a player that I like or just some semblance of a uh, of team, you know, or organization. You, you know, we come off of the uh, finals and, and what do we see? We see teams that built through the draft, teams that, you know, uh, they bought into the guys that, you know, they kind of had there. They had continuity, you know, um, Golden State, obviously Celtics. You know, there's some other teams that that do that. You know, there's some other teams that go away from it and the kind of star chase. I do believe that we're st kind of still in that star chase mode by, def you know, uh, by default, we're kind of let the, let the kids play something. What we've all been kind of wanting to as Nick fans. Um, uh, again, I don't even want to say all, but I, my, myself, I've been wanting to let the kids play, wanting to see what we do have, whether they're good or not. You know, I, I'm fine with that. You know, I I was very happy to see the depth that we had. Uh, I think that's going to be one of our strengths. Uh, this team reminds me of the bench portion. Of, and this was even before coming into yesterday's game. You know, I was saying this team has that mob deep type of a feel to it as far as the bench. You know, um, obviously we don't have a mellow on the team. I think Julius thinks he's mellow at times. Um, maybe he's a mellow light. If he could get back to that almighty fourth seed, you know, uh, if we could get back there, um, maybe he can have some mellow light. Mitch Robinson plays some defensive of the year candidate, a la Tyson Chandler. When we were there, I don't really know who our Stoudemire nope. is. <laughs> let me, let me, uh, let me ask a couple questions. Um, yeah, yeah. The the Knicks were thirty seven and forty five last year, right? Um, I have the my prediction for them. I actually think they gain a few games. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be necessarily enough 
to put them in the play-in, right? The play-in was 43-39 and 39 last year. Uh, do you think that the Knicks have enough talent as is to make the top six seed, uh, which was 46 wins? That's a nine-win difference. Or do you think more realistically the Knicks are going to be challenging uh, for the play-in and you want to push for seven or eight seed, which was 44 and 43 wins recently? Now, with the with that, obviously a lot of things factor in, right? Um, health, right? Health is going to be a big thing. But yeah, I do have the Knicks projected as of right now for a 44 to 47 win team. I think we have that talent. I think we have the point guard. Hang on, sorry, my, my daughter is going off right now. Oh, it's all good, man. Take care of the daughter and come on back. We're gonna get some hands up while we. Yes, wait. but um, no, nah, yeah, she's good. Okay. But um, yeah, I I do think we're about a 44 to 47 win team. I think uh, you know, the with the with the ability to have a point guard. Not only a starting point guard, but a backup point guard. And then obviously a lot of people wanted to give the keys to quickly. You know, if quickly can continue to do some nice things, that gives our team no no kind of uh, – there's no lacking at that point guard for for once. I mean, we, we haven't really had anyone, you know, that that's had this amount. We haven't had this, this much depth at point guard since I can remember, even when we did have a, a solid point guard. Um but, yeah, I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be able to challenge for that. I think we're definitely going to be in that play into up to potentially a six seed. You know, right. I think that's probably our cap. But, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's kind of where I have us right now. Let's get some other voices in here as we talk. Knicks, um, the preview is up there, ladies and gentlemen. So go ahead and click on that. Head over to hoopspaces.com to read the Knicks preview. Uh, and the poll is up there. Uh, this is over under. 41 wins for the New York Knicks. 41 wins over under. Are they going to hit over or are they going to hit under? If you want to hedge, all right, and, I, and this is why I didn't add a third option because I know some people could be like, there's a third option. If you want to hedge, don't bother. Like, I'm not, like, don't bother. Like, we haven't had a 500 team in the NBA, like, in years. It's always 42 and 40 or 40 and 42. <laughs> All right, so if you if you want to hedge, keep the hedge to yourself. Over under forty one. We'll open with that with JC on gaming, and we'll head over to Jeek. Uh, over under forty one, and what are your thoughts for the Knicks this year? Um, honestly, good morning, everybody. Shout out to the host, speakers, and listeners. It is I Y C D C A K A J C on gaming. Um, I said this the other night. A Knicks going forty two and forty two. Um, they went thirty seven and forty five. You said last year or something like that. <laughs> That means they playing extra games. <laughs> That's eighty four. They only play. No, 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 no. My bad. I meant I meant forty two and forty. My bad. My bad. My bad. I just I I be forgetting eighty two games. Um, forty two and forty is going to be what they finish. Um, I think the East is going to be top heavy, but I can definitely see the Knicks finishing somewhere sixth or seventh. Um, hell, I'll even say fifth. Um, I don't have an issue with the way that the Knicks are playing basketball. Some games they lost last year, they just gave it away. Like it wasn't even – they weren't even trying half of the season. So I think that when you put them in a good position, I think RJ comes back focused. I think Julius has a point to prove. I think he's tired of everybody telling him who he is or isn't or whatever the case may be. I like seeing quickly and top in, you know, show spurts of, you know, one day being uh, that reliable third piece or whatever the case may be, wherever they are um, for their team. And I think if they just put it together, um, they can definitely make that move. That's that's what I believe. Um, You know, I'm here to push a nasty agenda. Um, and I'm going to push three because I haven't been here for a while. Um, the first nasty agenda, um, I need the Lakers to tank. I need them to get the number one draft pick. Um, you guys know I'm a Pelicans fan, so I don't have to say any more about that. Um, the second nasty agenda I'm about to push, uh, Jabari is going to be the rookie of the year. I'm just letting you guys know that right now. Don't even worry about it. Paulo can do whatever he needs to do. Jabari is him already. And last but not least, um, there's a guy by the name of Victor Wanga Banga Bongi Bangya. Um, that guy, uh, I, I like him, right? Um, I wanted to give him the same treatment that I gave Chet, right? The only difference is he has a little bit more 
size to him, 11 more pounds more than uh, Chet is. And the way that he decides that he is just not going to get injured, the way that he gets out of the way when guys come into the paint, I think he understands how small he is. So I think that he's playing the game smarter, making better business decisions. I think he's going to be better than Chet. Um, those are my three. Um, oh, and, then, and one more thing, uh, Hoops. You said which team's going to win the 2023 NBA Finals. I don't see the Pelicans up there at all. <laughs> you, 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 the Celtics have a zero percent up there. You might as well put the Pelicans up there. At least the Pelicans would have got nineteen percent. So oh, oh, that's man. all I got to say about that. Look, I, 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 I promise you, I will get a, a poll out there uh, with the Pelicans. There, there's a reason why those four teams are up there. Uh, this was the NBA GM survey, uh, the NBA app. So, like the team that runs the app surveyed the GMs. I need to get the GM tweet up there. These are those teams, right? Um, I would. I don't have Boston up there. I, I. I don't. I think the the loss of Robert Williams opening the season, and I think probably the prohibitive understanding that he might not be there through the season, um, lowers their ceiling drastically. Even more so, I think honestly, than if Marcus Smart was injured, because they're so deep at guard with two. Uh, you know, recent acquisitions with Derek White and Malcolm Brogdon. All right, uh, G, hop in here. Your thoughts on um the Knicks and and Jason's nasty propaganda that Jabari Smith is going to be the Rookie of the Year over Keegan Murray? I'm not going to acknowledge Jabari Smith, but um, Jabari Smith is talented, and you know what? <laughs> he he'll probably be in consideration, but I don't think he gets it. Um. I want to shout out Nick Stan for having a very balanced, for most Knicks fans, uh, out fan. I want to say that no one watching that Pistons Knicks game should take too much stock into that result uh, because my Pistons may look better on paper, but we have a huge problem named Dwayne Casey. Um, and until that problem is alleviated, we're only going to be so good. Um, and with, Cade and Jalen uh, and Ivy and Duran uh, and now Bogdanovich all coming together. We have we're we're a, we're a two three years from now making a, a, a real impact team. We're we're not an impact team this year, even though we'll probably be two or three wins better. Um, so my over under, I think, unfortunately, the Knicks are going to be under forty one wins. Um, I think the slight changes and improvements to some teams are going to sneak a couple wins away from the Knicks, despite the fact that Jalen Brunson um, looks very good and very comfortable with this Knicks squad, which definitely makes them better. However, all the playoff teams, except for the Hawks, um, look still to be around the same strength. Um, Robert Williams off the Celtics does hurt them, but they're still a playoff team regardless. And if they can eke a little production out of that bum Blake Griffin, um, then they'll, they won't be too far off from where they were. But, you know, your bottom playoff team from last year, Chicago, uh, they, they, they look like they'll be all right. They'll, they should still be a playoff team. Milwaukee's not going anywhere. The Heat aren't going anywhere. The Sixers aren't going anywhere. Uh, the Nets, if healthy, should not be going anywhere. So it's going to be real tough uh, to eke out more than a play-in p- uh, position for the Knicks. But the outlook is is positive should they have Brunson and then a, her- a healthy Derrick Rose for the full season. Yeah, I want to I wanna say, like, don't forget everybody, the East was the team that had the uh, all teams with the winning record. Right. Like it's it's going to be tough. The Knicks finished um, six games out of the 10th spot uh, again. And Charlotte was in the 10th spot. I don't think anybody's expecting Charlotte to stay at 10. I think the general consensus is that they drop back a few games due to um, staying put uh, the prohibitive loss of uh, Miles Bridges on a potential suspension and legal issues. And the general lack of depth beyond, you know, two players on the bench, like no one has faith in them. I think a lot of people have more faith in Cleveland, Atlanta and Boston uh, really actually trying to ratchet up the pressure. So, like, that's why I also put 
the, the over under at 41 um, because I actually have them at 40 and 42. So if you want to read the full write up, it's about a two minute read. I don't want to make it so like you're there forever. Hop in, figure out what the Knicks did in the off season because it's in there and in the general uh, idea of what they're going to look forward to for the season. All right. Um, real real but, quick, just before, just to, before I close, you mentioned Cleveland. That was going to be my last point. Um, I was actually at the Garden for the Knicks in Cleveland last year, um, and Jalen should is going to be really helpful just because the point guard spot was the biggest weakness in that game. Um, Darius Garland destroyed the Knicks, and all the, the point guard play is so uh, dependent on the Knicks having a positive motor. So Cleveland is definitely one of those teams that unfortunately I think is going to take some more wins, even if they didn't have Spider. Uh, a healthy Cleveland team last year is a lot better than most people realize. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, funny thing about Chicago, I, I, I'm i more worried about Chicago than any other top six team. Um, I think Boston drops down two-fifths or six. I think Chicago is is on the lookout because – that's what I was going to bring up, Chris. Yeah. That's what I was going to bring up. Brooklyn and Atlanta and Cleveland, um, they are stacked compared to Chicago with uh, youth and, and multi-faceted players. Like, I love DeMar DeRozan, but he's not stretching the floor on you, you know? I love Alex Caruso, but eh, he, ain't, he ain't it on offense. Um, all right, let me get KP in here. I want to also uh, welcome everybody else who's just joined us. If you want a mic, go ahead and request it. Uh, join the panel up top. And if you're down below, we do want to say thank you for joining us here on your hump day. Uh, brought to you by uh, slamgoods.com. Head over there now and, and pick up some of these hoodies that are on sale. Why they're on sale? Uh, because it is hoodie season. I woke up. It was 43 degrees this morning. And I was really happy that I had this slam to the world hoodie. Right. It's like it's the good hoodie. It's thick. Right. So it's going to stay. It ain't going to rub off like some of those Hanes hoodies y'all be buying. Um, and it kept me warm and it can be yours with 15 percent off. Just go to slamgoods.com and use code uh, hoop spaces. It's that simple. Like, that's it. That's all you got to do. I'll save you money. You get a good hoodie and slam Goods says, hey, this guy's, you know, doing dope. All right. Uh, KP is in the house. He's going to hate on the Knicks. KP, go ahead. Uh, it's not only hoodie season, but it's hoodie stealing season. So get two because your significant other will steal your hoodie. Um, so, yeah, get two of those. And thank you, Christopher. Appreciate that. Um, I know it's a slow day because you got the Knicks up here. Um, you know, the, you know North Korea is dropping bombs. Uh, you got climate change going on. You got politi- uh, politicians doing crazy stuff. Uh, former football players with CTE, but you're talking about the Knicks. Uh, the Knicks are in Harren. They play in Harren Hall, Chris. Are you familiar with Harren Hall? I am, actually. So Harren Hall, for the people unfamiliar, uh, it's the cursed kingdom of Game of Thrones. No king has made it out of there alive. Uh, so they play right in Harren Hall, uh, which is on 34th Street, um, and that's a cursed building. That building needs to be moved, which Mayor Eric Adams is considering. I say move it to the bottom of the ocean where Aquaman lives. You can play a lot better teams down there. So, they, you know, they can get a better seed if they under the ocean where they belong. Um, hey, you, who, I, hurt you? who hurt you? Who hurt you? No, 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 nobody hurt me. I'm just telling the, the facts. Also, when you said the Knicks are going to win 41 games, that sounds similarly to what the ESPN algorithm told me the Warriors are going to win. So how dare you compare... Uh, the Knicks to the Warriors in any sense of the word or any sense of the imagination, Christopher. I I, I am uh, offended by that. I'm uh, despondent by that. And I'm gonna um I'm gonna curse you out in my mind for about one second. There you go. See, I just curse you out really quickly. And then lastly, uh, tomorrow is the big day. I'm I'm trying to cover this Google event. They are releasing their new phone, their new watch, new devices. Um, shout out to Android. Shout out to to Google and everything great that they're doing. Uh, Apple is being forced. And my last thing, Chris, the European government is saying, hey, Apple, make your charging ports, charging port standards so that you don't have people buying multiple de- uh, cables to carry around for the whole world. So you got to carry around a lightning port. Then you got to carry around a USB-C port. Then you got to carry around this. Apple got y'all fooled, man. 
They got y'all fooled, but it's going to take the government to make y'all see the light. Get off of Apple. It's mid. It's like Marvel movies. It's super mid. Let it go. You just don't like anything popular, it seems. <laughs> well, popularity, MC Hammer was popular, too. So was Vanilla Ice. So there you go. Oh, Fair, fair enough. Fair coming enough. here with some fat eight, man. Um, Heron Hall, you talking about St. John's, right? No, I'm talking about Game of Thrones, Chris. Not oh, not Game St. John's. Oh, okay. I thought you were actually talking about St. John. No, Chris. No, no, no. Malik the last Game thing of I thought Thrones, about Chris. Chris. All right. I'm just throwing in St. John's because I, I, I like St. John's University. Shout out to the old school Big East, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Run DMC, St. John's. There you go. Uh, all right. Mark Edwards is in the building. One of the best trainers that you can learn from in, in terms of how to shoot a basketball. Uh, but if you want to be a better fan, how to actually watch the game of basketball, he, he kind of explains it to you in, in a way uh, – existing in two worlds that we just don't um so when he does talk we tend to allow him to, to say and, and take the mic and go in whatever direction he wants because every time he's uh blessed us with his time we get smarter uh mark lots to get to uh you see the very first topic it's the women yama olympics um you saw the game last night i love scoot but last night was just something else your thoughts on that uh and anything else that you got coming up in the world of the nba I need about 15 minutes. So let, let me finish getting dressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a lot for you. I got a lot of insight for you on that game, for real. Give me 15 All right, minutes. Cool. All right, cool. Uh, 15 minutes. So at the top of the hour, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to hear uh, Mark, his thoughts on the game last night. And again, if, if you don't understand what I say, uh, he's one of the best trainers in the league. Um, You'll understand soon enough when you start hearing him break it down. Uh, we've got a couple new uh, ads up here. Optimus Pels fan. CJ and Samir is in the building, uh, but we are going to go ahead and go to Jeek because we did talk some Knicks, but we do need to talk about some Pistons as well. Uh, I actually love the pairing of Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey. I think it can be dynamic, but one thing that I did see, and I want to know your opinion, Jeek, I think Cade Cunningham is so good that he's also wanting to allow his teammates uh, to s thrive and succeed that he might at times, allow Jaden Ivey to have the ball when really he should have it, in my opinion. I saw that a couple of times. Uh, that's a natural thing as well. What did you see from this di you know, young, dynamic duo that you're looking at, you know, developing the next wave of Detroit basketball? That's a great question. So um, I, I have a lot of stock into uh, Cunningham and Ivey, and I – I agree with you. Um, Cade has a tendency to be a, sometimes a bit with. All right, you either got a phone call or you're breaking out. I, I think. Can, like, can you hear me better? Yep, we got okay. you now. Um, I think Cade, like, like you said, can be too unselfish with the ball sometimes. Um, I think that's going to come with with some time and also just him and Jaden feeling um, themselves out. Uh, Detroit Pistons' success has always been based upon strong backcourts. Zeke and Joe, Mr. Big Shot and Rip, and I think for our future it's going to be Cunningham and Ivy, uh, which how they fit together is going to be the thing. And it may not really – Cade is more of a – Joe Dumars mentality type um, and Ivy is more of a Zeke type. He's more of a take it to the rack, fearless, take the shot where Jay or where Cade is, you know, more of a, uh, a pass. Not, I don't want to say passive, but he's, he's softer. I, I saw the right word, but he's not, he's not the aggressor um, that, that Ivy is. And I think he needs to, to, be a bit more aggressive at times. And like you said, he, there are shots he should be taking. There are times where he should have the ball in his hands and be directing traffic and making sure he's controlling the flow of the game. And I, my fear is not that Cade can't develop that and that Jay and then Ivy won't be able to defer when needed. My fear is that Casey can't properly do that, which is why I want him out of Detroit 
and I want I would love a Mark Jackson to be able to coach that um, and develop that backcourt the way it needs to be. Yeah, I, you know, I, uh, I, I like the Wayne Casey. I think he's a great coach, great tactician. He just he unfortunately has the reputation of uh, being a a stunter as opposed to a developer. I, and then he's done better. And he doesn't really get as much credit as he should for Toronto uh, because he actually developed the core of Toronto that went on to win uh, after they traded for Kawhi. Um, but he does have a very static offense. And, and it does tend to slow the offensive development. You can look at um, Isaiah Stewart as an example. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally think he should probably be getting at least six to eight touches uh, and and he's never, I think, averaged more than five. Um, you've got a couple other young players, Killian Hayes, who who just seems to have been. Killian's got no development, no growth each year. Yeah, and left in developmental purgatory is what I was going to say. Absolutely. Yeah. And even even Sadiq Bay, like, almost seemed to play out of body in spite. Of what what Detroit wanted to do offensively last year, um, no, though that's one hundred percent. Like you said, yeah. um, per, because and nothing nothing against Coach Casey personally, because I do think he's a great coach, but um, he's only gets to me. He's like a Lenny Wilkins. He gets you to a certain level, and then after that, you're not you know uh, you're not really going to go any higher. And he his offense, like you said, it's it's very it's very stagnant. And the great, the good teams he had in Toronto um, were able to be that good because of the level of talent that he had with Demar and you know in Lowry, uh, you know in their core, and because of their high level of play and their ability, they were able to get to a certain level, but they weren't able to get over the hump that the humps that they should have, uh, and which were in largely in part to to his coaching, and I don't feel that he is the right person. Um, for this young Detroit team, I, his demeanor really doesn't fit uh, Detroit basketball culture either. Um, and I, you I, wouldn't, just, I don't, I don't think he's a right fit. And also, I think he's too old. Um, I, his in, in mindset, I think he's, he's such an old school coach that I don't think he's going to be able to be that effective with all these players who were born in the '90s or early 2000s. Like these aren't. These aren't guys, these aren't LeBron guys who were born in the 80s or, you know, like, you know, these aren't even early 90s babies. These are late 90s, early 2000s babies he's coaching. And I don't most, think most of them coach yeah, that. Most of them are 2000 babies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, do want to say uh, Jalen Duran did exactly what I expected Jalen Duran to do, and that was rebound the basketball. Uh, he is not allergic to rebounding the basketball. Uh, he will be starting, I think, ahead of Stewart sooner rather than later. I want to get sure. some other voices in here, Jeek, uh, to talk some Pistons. We got Micah with his hand up. We're going to get him in here. And if anybody else up on the stage has something about the Pistons, uh, we'll do that. Samir wants to talk some Ant Edwards. We got Optimistic Pels fan to talk Zion. Uh, and CJ is probably wondering uh, why I have the Warriors up there in that poll. Micah, go ahead. Your thoughts on the Pistons. Man, I was just going to say one real quick thing on the Pistons. Look, I understand Mavs fans getting upset about taking Josh Green over Desmond Bain, but Sadiq Bay, he ain't it. That's not a guy to get, to get upset over. I'm sorry. I just, in my opinion, I'm higher on Josh Green than I am on Sadiq Bay because he just, he hasn't, Show me enough, even though he's got more time. I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I just don't feel like he's the player for us to be getting upset about. No, I, I, I can understand. A lot of people um, like Josh Green. I'm actually, I'm big on Josh Green this year. Uh, but what Sadiq Bay again did last year is really what is driving this conversation. Last year, he, he put up 16, 5, and 3. Uh, and he did it with Cade in and out the lineup and, and nobody else. <laughs> like Corey Joseph at one point was the, the, the next best player 
for the Detroit Pistons when Cade uh, Cunningham was was out with an ankle injury. So, like, I love Corey Joseph. By the way, any contender who needs a backup point guard, like, holla at Detroit. Uh, Corey's your dude. Um, he performed. He performed phenomenally, and and oftentimes was their offense. So, like, that's why. Can he duplicate it now that Jaden Ivey's there and there's more responsibility uh, gleaned out? Uh, that's seen, that that's going to be need to be seen. But like then they, it's not like they 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 don't have the time to play him. Uh, the biggest question I have now though is picking up Bogdanovich. Does this stunt uh, the redevelopment or return of Marcus Bagley? Uh, <laughs> um, or Marvin Bagley, sorry, uh, not his brother. Marvin Bagley the third. I, I think that's a possibility. Uh, let's go up to um, Optimus Pels fan first. Uh, any thoughts on Detroit? Uh, and then we'll go to Samir, and then we'll talk Aunt Edwards real quick. We'll close up with Zion, and then we'll double back with Mark, who will be back. Go ahead, uh, Optimus Pels. What do you got for Detroit? Chris, I just want to start out by saying it is uh, extremely good to hear your voice. I feel like uh, two and a half months, man. Haven't heard the the man from Hoop Spaces himself. Hey, it's, gonna, no, it's, we, good to, it's gonna be back, man. We uh, we've been here. Uh, we 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 gone down to three days a week for the off season, but we we did the WNBA through the finals, and and uh, we've done some some off season work. Uh, glad that everybody's coming back though, and and I'm gonna take this time because like I see we've got seventy people in the room, uh, so people are coming back, but like you're not showing the love. Of coming back. I need y'all to like and retweet the show card. It's the very first one, and like there's only 15 and 13. Like, that, that's you got to get those numbers up, man. Anyway, uh, thoughts on Detroit? What do you got? So, Chris, I will be completely honest. I haven't get I haven't gotten to see Detroit yet. Um, I <laughs> am really excited. I know, I know, I know. The only uh, only preseason games I've watched so far were the Clippers game and my Pels game last night. And I actually just finished my rewatch of last night's game. Um, I definitely don't want to take away from Detroit shine. So uh, definitely circle back to me um, when, uh, when, when you're ready to talk Pels for sure. So if anybody's else, anybody else has anything Detroit related, please, I would love to hear about it. Yeah. I know Samir wants to, to say something about Aaron Edwards, KP, uh, Nick Stan, CJ, you got anything on Detroit? I like Detroit. Uh, they're my sleeper team uh, to get into the play-in. Um, they're going to be doing better than they did last year. I like the mix of players that they have, like Kate Cunningham as a point guard, a point, you know, point two guard, whatever that position is now. He has the size. He has the um, awareness and passing ability to be a, a really good point guard, and he can shoot. So, yeah, I, I like Detroit. Um like them a lot. All right. Definitely a fan of the um, Detroit Knicks. <laughs> uh. <laughs> they, got Knicks they got former Knicks players on that team. Yo, they got Alec Burks. <laughs> well, I might have to reconsider them. I, I got to go back and do my algorithmic uh, <laughs> equation. Oh, I might have to reconsider. Hey, Magruder, Magruder was a Nick, right? I think maybe for a high second or something. Yeah, like a 10 day or something. Yeah, I, yeah. Where he was, I'm going to look it up. Cause I, I think Magruder. Was the because he was uh, yeah yeah because he went from the Knicks to the Heat and yeah. then like I remembered like he pulled the Anthony Mason is is what what, what we called it the, the the rook was supposed to be a Nick you know he traded so we, you know so I, I, I like, yeah, yeah. You right. yeah. What did, he did, did he get lost the, on the train did he get lost on the train and then went to the next team that's what happened I, it's something like that man <laughs> I guess somehow we were able to get Jalen Brunson after that. You know, which I, I for one, didn't necessarily see us. I, I didn't have that. You know, I look, I, I'm not – I don't like to get sucked into a lot of things that people talk about, especially because it's next for click stuff. So whenever it's next for click stuff, I try not to get too sucked into it. So I was hopeful we could get, you know, Brunson. But I'm, I'm very happy that he's here now. But I, I, I like Detroit. I like Detroit a lot. You know, um, they got a lot of talent. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what – what they're going to be. Yeah, I think they're going to have a quick turnaround. I'm hoping, you know, that pick converts pretty soon, you know. You know, that pick that they got for us, you know, that we got from them, I should say. So, um, I like them. I hope they do well so that pick does convert. All right. There you go. Uh, CJ, uh, you, you've you been up here for a minute, been quiet. You got anything on the, the Pistons? And I know Danny D uh, will have something to say being the Detroit native. CJ, go ahead. 
Yeah, I um I was actually uh intrigued by what Jeek said about Dwayne Casey. Um he's the first Piston fan I've actually heard um kind of have their 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 uh I guess their doubts about Dwayne Casey and um I understand where he's coming from, um but I do like the future. I do like what Trey Weaver has built in Detroit. Um I did see a few highlights of Jaden Ivey's debut. Um, I am excited for that Cunningham Ivy backcourt. Um, and um, I was surprised by Micah saying that he doesn't get why <laughs> Mav fans are upset about the whole Sadiq Bay thing. I think Sadiq Bay is actually one of the kind of tipping points as far as the team and their their future because, like, Kate Cunningham was kind of an obvious talent coming out. Jaden Ivey, to me, is an obvious talent coming out. But I think Sadiq Bey was kind of a question mark as to what he could potentially be. He did put up a 50 ball last year for what it's worth. Um, that all depends on how you, much you value that. But um, I think he's going to be an integral piece in uh, Detroit's future. Um that's pretty much it, but I'm more excited about that whole Wimben Yama and uh School Henderson matchup that happened yesterday. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that as soon as we get to to Mark. Want to make sure that we get the, the rest of the teams up here. Uh Malika Walker will be joining us momentarily, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once I'm able to uh get a space up here. Uh up next, we're gonna go to Danny D. Uh Danny D, Detroit basketball is starting to uh build itself back. What are your thoughts? Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, mm. Oh, I, you know what? I like the young talent. I like Cade, Ivy, and what they bring. Stewart looked good. The Hayes kid looked good, too. And um, I just think I'm going to give Dwayne Casey a chance. CJ, that's your second person you about to hear. <laughs> I don't know if Dwayne Casey is the right person for this young group. Um, I'm two seconds from saying maybe you might want to knock on Boston's door and say, hey, you, <laughs> you, you want to pray your butt <laughs> Get these young kids. Look, whatever happened in Boston, that's in Boston. We in Detroit. Hey. If you want to bring Mark Jackson in, go ahead. Look, I ain't ashamed to admit my shortcomings over here. I'm a desperate chick. I will take anything. I don't want to see young talent wasted. So, hey, it, it, hey, it's me. But <laughs> if I don't see any improvement um, by the time we get to – I know just one – it's just one preseason game. So, I'm going to let us – it's just like – the offense gets staggered just a little bit. It's, it's too much. It was too much one on one for a little for me. As I don't know where everybody else saw, but it was too much one on one. And when they moved the ball, things got flowing. So, uh, I don't know if he's the right person. If he's still trying to figure out some things out um, on his end with this talent. Maybe this is the most talent he's ever had. Um, in his coaching career, um, I know he coached in Toronto, but that's Toronto. Okay. Anyway, um, like Toronto the city? Huh? Hey, Danny, they they may call for Kenny Atkinson. Oh. Hey, you know what? That may be true too. I just want Detroit to be great again. Okay, you got the nice new stadium downtown. Things are popping downtown. Um, you know, it, 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 I'm just saying. Great talent. I don't want him to get wasted, but I'm going. Like I said, it's preseason, so I um they're gonna look at the tape. They're gonna see some things they approve from because you can look good preseason and be horrible um um uh, regular season. I mean, the Lakers gonna late, but you know <laughs> that's all I got for them. But yeah, if Dwayne Casey don't see if if you don't see improvement in his team. Dwayne Casey's job is in danger, and and that's just my opinion. I mean, somebody else may have something different, but no, that I think that's pretty much the uh, the the common theme. I actually yeah. have the Pistons um, 
preview done. I just don't have it uh, published yet. It'll be probably published by Friday. Um, I need to get some other voices in here with five. You could drop me down. That is all I had to say. And if you don't want to get up here and talk, get in the box, y'all. Yeah. And retweet. Okay. Get... You want content? Here we go. Yeah. So come on, drop me. Go ahead. Appreciate it, Danny. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, Malika will come and take Danny's place. KP's got his hands up. Go ahead, KP, real quick. We'll hop down <laughs> here to talk Ant Man to hear what he's got to say uh, about arguably the most. Um, Entertaining player in the league right now. KP, go ahead. 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah, JFK is gone, but I'm going to tell him. I know his heart dropped, and shout out to Tyler Harrell. Um, his heart dropped when Tyler Harrell went down yesterday. He signed that contract just in time. Oh, boy, that was a close one. And shout out to the best player in the world, uh, which is Steph Curry, who is not only in 2K23, he's in the PGA game. And I'm going to give leave with a quote by the great philosopher Pusha T. Uh, legend in two games, like I'm Pee Wee Kirkland. Shout out to Steph, man. All right, point to KP. Uh, if you have push a T on your hoop spaces bingo card, give yourself a point. Um, you know what? I, I sat down, it, this bingo card idea is, is awesome, right? I, it is murderous trying to figure out how to make this in, in actuality because. You have to have X amount of bingo cards. Like, I settled on nine, you know, uh, boxes. So, like, I would have to generate 30 cards to get 270 words. But, like, that would probably only be enough for one week. Like, it's just absolutely insane the amount of work. Uh, Like the Minnesota Timberwolves did in overhauling the roster, uh, victorious last night over the Miami Heat 121 111 Samir's here. He's got something to say about Anthony Edwards. We'll listen to him real quick, uh, and and we'll go down the Minnesota train, and then we'll talk to the optimistic Pels fan, uh, who is the namesake of every Pelican fan right now after watching Zion Williamson return healthy. Samir, uh, what's your take on Anthony Edwards? Uh, good morning or good evening over across the, the pond over in India, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead, Samir. Yes, sure, my friend. How are you? And all the members of our Hope Space having good morning uh, and your time. It's, it's... I am, and, and I'm pretty sure everybody else down below is, and we thank you. Yeah, just I just want to say that Anthony Edwards' performance is just brilliant today as they have their tank and their potential to do as they got their time, the whole Minnesota Timberwolves team have performance best. And uh, the NBA G League Ignite matches like Blair Wembeana Victor and Scott Anderson's the projected 2023 draft pick and much other but have not time to talk about that yeah no we're we're going to we're going to talk about uh Victor Robin Yama and Scoot uh Henderson momentarily once we get up to Mark Edwards um but in regards to uh Minnesota and Anthony Edwards um I think I said this last year and I want to know what people up top think so Samir can hear us uh I said that this is now Anthony Edwards team the team will go as far as he is able to carry them. He's now the, the, the vocal leader on the court, the emotional leader on the court. Uh, that's what I saw last year. I want to hear what you guys think this year. Uh, we'll go to Malika Walker first so she can go ahead and get her uh, feet wet, so to speak, on Anthony Edwards before we talk about Victor Wabanyama and the Wabanyama Olympics. Go ahead, Malika, your thoughts on Anthony Edwards, and then we'll go to Optimus Pell, CJ, Nick Stan. And then we'll talk about Zion, and then Mark will let us know when he's ready. Go ahead, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Anthony Edwards, I'm, what, Minnesota is going to be one of the teams I watch this year. Um, I think Anthony Edwards is going to take another leap this year. Um, yeah, he's going to take another leap this year. I think that the team, the squad that they got, I think they're going to be a definite contender in the West. You know, putting Rudy Gobert in that team, um, moving – you know, like Carl Anthony Towns to the four, I think that's going to really, I think they really have a chance to really 
you know, go deeper in the playoffs and, and make some noise. And I think they'll be able to do that with Anthony Edwards being more consistent and, and taking that leap this season that he needs to take. Um, but we'll see how he does this season. Um, and he is young. He made a mistake with some of the things that he said. I am not forgiving what he said, but he made some, you know, ignorant comments. He's young. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping he, you know, put that work in an off season so we can see it reflected on the court this season. And time will tell, like, if he's consistent. Yeah, and, and time will tell. Uh, he issued an apology, and time will tell if he improves in that aspect, too. Um, I actually, yeah, yeah I, I, I've talked to some, you know, people who watch them. Like, they're called scouts. This is what they do. And it's it, it's just, it's it's not it's not an easy conversation to have within uh, the black community. But there is a large percentage of the black community uh, that can have homophobic thoughts or uh, tendencies. Not, that's actually based off of anything other than popularism like in terms of how uh coaches create vernacular it, it, there's actually a pretty good read that was done um by cornelius west um who who you know is a philosopher uh and uh, professor emeritus um that that actually explains this in depth it might, might, might not be the form for it but if i can find it i'll post it up here because it's a really good read uh cj your thoughts um I'm intrigued by Minnesota. I am curious if the rumors about the rotation are true, about um, them putting Ant and Cap together more and then having D'Angelo and Rudy Gobert together. It makes a lot of sense to me, though, um, just because, you know, D'Angelo and Rudy work great as pick-and-roll partners, and then I feel like Cat and Ant make sense together offensively. So, like, that's going to be interesting. Um, but I'm not as yeah, – I'm not going to say down, but I'm not as doubtful of the Minnesota Timberwolves as a lot of people are. Um, I believe that the Carl Anthony Towns and Gobert frontcourt can work. I just want to see it so that I can see how it's going to work, but I believe it can work. So like I'm excited to see it in the regular season because I I unfortunately didn't get to watch the uh, preseason game. Well, a quick note about that: um, Carl Anthony Towns is coming off of a non-COVID illness and uh, has lost a lot of weight, it's down two thirty, two thirty-five, uh, and and he was a point guard and had that rapid development. And I'm honestly saying. He might want to really consider keeping a, a, a smaller frame if, if, since Gobert is there. And and I don't think people understand, like, this isn't – Cat has never been a, a seven-footer. Like, he was never that type of big uh, as we, we drop down uh, Optus Pels and uh, we'll try to get him back up here so we can talk Zion too. Um, And, and I think this actually bodes better for that matchup because he's not going to feel the need to potentially have to maybe bulk up uh, to 250, 255. Um, he could play a leaner uh, four more naturally, and he already shoots the three well. So I, I honestly think that could be a silver lining in disguise to make that that duo work. Um, and also, I'm huge on Jalen Knoll. Um, he, he was a second-round pick in 2019. He got some burn last season. He's a dog. Like, I like him too. He's going to do the everything that nobody else is going to do because he understands what I think his role and, and what his future in the league is. Um, I, so much so that I wouldn't doubt that they start him uh, instead of Jaden McDaniels and have Jaden McDaniels come off the bench because he's more versatile because um, he's like he's 6'8 and he can guard one through four, whereas Jalen's 6'3", 6'4". So uh, I'm huge on them. I'm huge on the depth that Minnesota has that I think a lot of teams or a lot of people aren't really talking about as well. Um, I just think the, the problem is, is they don't have that backup guard that y you feel comfortable with. Like McLaughlin, you know, did good at USC – He's he's steady, but is he going to be the person who's going to be able to come in if D'Lo is hurt um, and and take over? I just I just don't know. Now, Chris, I I do have a quick question for you because I 
when I heard that story um, about what you mentioned about the weight that Cat lost, and, and maybe maybe I read it wrong, but originally somebody said he had dropped to like 230-something, and then I saw a beat writer who covers Minnesota said he didn't lose that much weight. So he is like 250-something right now? No, I, I I think he's more than likely in the 40s. Um, it, from what – like he bulks up and leans out, right? Like that's kind of how he's done it. And so okay. you'll see him as listed as high as 255. Um, but he tends to then whittle his way back down. Like I, it's like Anthony Davis. Like neither one of these two were ever supposed to be fives. And, and the fact that like a lot of people early on in the career saying like, oh, he needs to play center. He needs to play center. It's like Giannis. Like, no, they don't. Like you're only putting them there now because of some type of, quote, advantageous position it creates through analytics. But they're really fours. And, and that's fine. Like, that's totally fine. And, and I think people need to understand that, like, with us moving to positionless, air quote, basketball, we need to let some of these players play more at their natural weight as opposed to feeling the need to have to bulk up uh, like Cat did for his first four or five years in the league. And then speaking of bulking up, we can use that as a good segue. Uh, that's one player that we don't have to worry about bulking up, and that's because the entire world knew when Zion was bulked up, and now he doesn't look bulked up. He looks mean, he looks lean, and he looks like the next player uh, to break a backboard in the NBA professional game. And Optimus Pels fan is here to tell you why he's not the most important Pelican and why it's Herbert Jones and why Herbert Jones can be the spark that brings the Pelicans to the Western Conference Finals. Chris, you know me so well, man. You know me so well. So, look, I I just like the rest of the world. I was so happy to see Zion in a Pelicans uniform actually checking in the game and playing. He, he got about 20 minutes last night. Uh, he shot four for six. We all know how efficient he is. He's got the fastest second jump I've ever seen. Um, but, look, man, I'll be honest with you. I, I took some notes about what I wanted to say to the people, and Zion really didn't even come up um, for me. Last night, all eyes were on Dyson Daniels. Um, I think I was probably one of the only people on the planet that were watching uh, that was watching the fourth quarter of last night's game. But um, I gotta say, I'm extremely impressed with this rookie's feel for the game. Um, I mean, we always hear like he does the little things. Uh, he has a good feel. This this kid truly has a good feel for the game. Um, extremely gro- good at off, uh, off ball movement. He had five deflections last night, you know, and I, I'm I, I'm really impressed with that kind of stuff. Um, his shots weren't falling last night, but I was glad to see that he was uh, still aggressive and shooting. Um, he has a really great floater, and for being you know six eight six nine, um, you know can 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 create on ball can move around off ball. Um, that's really impressive to me. And, and I'm really hoping that he cracks the rotation sooner rather than later. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Willie green last night. Uh, he did a phenomenal job. I mean, I, every, all the Pelicans fans were pretty upset to see Garrett temple get minutes. Uh, and that was a big reason why they came back from 20. Um, but you know, uh, we had a, a complete momentum shift. Uh, the bulls went up with about four minutes left. And uh, Willie did a really good job of corralling all, you know, I mean, the roster was pretty much 65% of people that were going to be on the G League. Um, and he was able to calm them down. And uh, after that, Dyson, uh, we went on a 10-0 run with eight of those points coming from uh, Dyson Daniels. And obviously, since I'm up here, guys, I got to spread my Jose Alvarado propaganda. Um, he, and, and quote me on this, Jose Alvarado is the best playmaking guard on the Pelicans. And I wholeheartedly believe that. Um, also, he did the thing last night. <laughs> he uh, hit on the baseline and he uh, he uh, stripped the ball out of uh, out of I forgot I think it was Drummond's hands. Um, we didn't end up getting the steal, but man, first preseason game, he's back to his antics. But yeah, that's pretty I, much it, Chris. I still don't understand how the teams don't know he's doing this. Oh, they know. He's just sneaky, man. He, he's, he's a sneaky guy. Like, I, I don't know how his footsteps don't create any noise. But he, he's got it down, man. He's got it down. But major shout-out to him, man. Um, 
he sh- he was showing out this summer, uh, playing for Puerto Rico. He's just man. He he's he's a kid. I I really hope he creates a movement of you know young Hispanic kids tr- trying to play basketball. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I I would love that. I I, I think so too. Uh, and he's got a teammate who actually did that in Spain, uh, Willie Hernan Gomez, playing for his NBA yes, life. Because Jackson Hayes is also playing for his NBA life as well. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news for the league, uh, but the New Orleans Pelicans are one team that have the the contracts in place, plus the young talent to swing for the fences come the trade deadline. So if they are near the top, and let's say somebody like the Chicago Bulls slip, um, and somebody named DeMar DeRozan might become available to come off that bench to, to provide constant offensive pressure, my word, would that be just just fantastic for New Orleans. Wink. Um, all right. Chris, literally well, nothing would make me happier than, ha- than to have DeMar DeRozan on my team. I was actually begging for them to sign him before the Bulls, before the Bulls did. He is exactly the type of veteran lever- leadership. Uh, another guy that can that is automatic from the mid-range. Um, and that wink, wink, I'm gonna have to reach out to you about that. Um, is there something that you know that I don't? Oh, well, I'm just simply saying if, if DeMar DeRozan were to become available, he'd probably be the most, uh, sought off, sought after, uh, trade asset that you could get. Right. Like if I'm already projecting into the future, like if the bulls struggle and they fall out because of injury or whatnot, um, his contract and his ability to score, no matter what team he's on becomes, infinitely more valuable and the one weakness if you want to call it a weakness uh, that the new orleans pelicans have is born out of their strength of depth of young players they don't really have that dude off the bench who's going to give you a bucket and at this point like if they were to swing for the fences and demar was available i think that would be a a perfect fit that's just me i don't even know if he would be that expensive to be honest Eh, we'll find out if Chicago doesn't do well, that's I'm not saying they're going to do bad or, you know, do great. I'm just saying an if. Uh, Micah, your hands are up, so something struck a nerve. Go ahead and go, and we're going to check in with Mark to see if he's ready to talk about Victor Wabanyama. Um, yeah, I was going to ask uh, Optimus Pels, is, is that pick that y'all are getting from the Lakers, is that unprotected? My brother, what a good question. So, uh, yes, the next Lakers pick is unprotected. I believe we have okay. a swap in between them. Um, but, yeah, so we can either defer this year's pick to next year. Uh, or, yeah. I'm pretty sure nah, you don't, you don't want to defer on the, this. I'm telling you, this draft is stacked. Uh, like, literally, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the top ten end up being something. I mean, look, you got – you got Scoot, you got uh, Women Yamba, uh, a couple other guys that seems like they they're being lost in discussion. Um, you got the you got the twins coming out too. This draft this draft class is going to be stacked, and like I think like even those probably ten players could end up being something. Yeah, like I've, that's I've, just my opinion. I've got a I've got a high grade on seven players. But I haven't gone through everybody. Evan Townsend down below, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if, if you want somebody to follow who's going to go through some draft evaluations through the year, uh, shoot him a follow. But also, there, there's a person that, that comes in, he listens, and sometimes comes up on stage. He's a friend of ours. Uh, when I say ours, it's the original Hoop Spaces cast. Uh, and that's Matthew Mauer. And you can find him at the draft review. And, and he goes back in history – uh, for every NBA draft, he, he is completely uh, one of the locked-in dudes that you need to follow in re- regards to NBA draft. I, I've only gotten up to seven. Like I said, um, I can give them to you real quick. It's, it's Victor 1, Scoot 2. Uh, I think the player that's least talked about right now is Nick Smith. He's in Arkansas. I think he's going to probably be uh, a chance to the SEC Rookie of the Year, Player of the Year, Um, and he can be a two-way player. Uh, And then the overtime elite team has two guys that I think are probably a lock uh, for a high first-round pick, and and Amen Thompson. And if you haven't seen what he's done, like 
I I view him kind of like um he'll probably grow another three inches too. Like Lamar Odom esque. Uh, I think he's gonna be really good. And then Asur Thompson, uh, his brother, is it, th- those dudes. They they're gonna be great. And then Texas has a couple of players, and Duke has a couple of players, and of course my my favorite team, Villanova and Maryland. They've got a couple of guys, but well, not really Maryland. I, I just throw Maryland up there because we need to fear the turtle. Maryland women, though, uh, gonna be top ten for real. All right. Uh, we talked Zion. I want to thank Optimus Pels fan. Ladies and gentlemen, shoot him a follow. He will be hosting Pelican Spaces for us here on Hoop Spaces. And you can also tap in to the huge Pelicans Nation and get all of your fill of Pelicans content because he's tapped into some great people uh, in that, that wonderful – you know, it's actually a very vibrant group. And they're not really uh, pessimistic. Not, not like Charlotte. Charlotte fans right now, they're, they're kind of sad. They're the sad fans. We need to we need to make them feel better. Rightfully so. Yeah, I feel bad for Charlotte. Hey, I, I appreciate you, Chris. I got to uh, climb the point in a little bit. I got to dip. Thank you so much for everybody. And Chris, I will see you tomorrow. Y'all All take right. it easy. See you tomorrow. Have a good day. Uh, up next, if he's ready, we've got Mark I'm Edwards, Monstar Labs, uh, West, Midwest, East, Southeast, Southwest, wherever you need the best trainer uh, to teach you basketball. That's what you need to think. Monstar Labs, Mark Edwards. Um, what's up, man? Good morning. Uh, what's the, up, the, brother? The Victor Wabanyama Olympics uh, went off last night without a hitch. Uh, Scoot Henderson is is a phenomenal talent, and in any other draft, not named Zion Williamson, is the number one pick um, outside of Victor this year. My word, that was I. I've, I've watched it now three times. It's a hell of a game. What you got? Um, I was, um, I was entertained to say the least, um, with last night's game. Um, school's a kid I've been watching since, uh, eighth grade. Um, one of my good friends was his AAU coach and always praised him or whatever. Um, I actually tried, we tried to recruit him after his ninth grade year to come over to Wheeler High School, but he chose, uh, Cal where he wouldn't have any, um, you know, um, the, the style of play they were playing or whatever, you know, kind of fit him a little bit more. He can get up and down. I've always questioned Scoot's game in regards to shooting the basketball. Um, you know, my job, what I do is I, I'm not here to, to state the obvious a lot of times. My job a lot of times is to evaluate what guys can't do and tell them what they need to fix and have them, you know, proceed from there. So it's just a little different for me. So when people heard me critique Scoot, um, it was all about his shooting percentage. Last year, he shot 17% from the three-point line. And, you know, knowing what I know about the NBA, that's not going to cut it, uh, regardless of his athletic ability, because we've seen guys with uh, amazing athletic ability and no jump shot. You know, you have a short-lived, you know, career in regards to, you know, being successful. But yesterday, I think he played correctly. He shot a lot of long twos. Um, The fact that he can attack and get downhill, keeps defenders on their heels to the point where he can, you know, hit those long twos or mid-range um, shots or whatever. And he was two for three from the three-point line, which meant he got an opportunity to take his time, you know, and step into those shots, kind of like what uh, John Morant did last year in the playoffs against Golden State. You know, they were so uh, afraid of him getting to the basket because they didn't have any rim protection that he, he was able to rhythm into to, to knock down some threes or whatever. Uh, and I think if school continues that, I think he'll be uh, he'll be an amazing pick in the NBA. Definitely number two. Uh, when Bignana is trained by one of my mentees, um, my young boy Tim Martin, a guy who um, I kind of took on my my wing years ago, about wow, almost ten years ago, uh, when he was a young up and coming trainer and coach, and he's done an amazing job with him over the last two years. Tim is based out of Dallas, um, but he trains um, most of the French players over there for um, a French agency or whatever. And um, he's uh, he's a technician. He's trained um, Tyrese Maxey, uh, the big man uh, for the for the Pacers. A bunch of guys. A bunch of guys. It's too much to name right now. Um, but he's getting some great direction and development. I have a couple of problems with his game. Um, the problem is, is he's shooting those jump shots. Um, he's stepping into them off the dribble. And I want to see him do more pick and pop, which he did last night. I'd like to see him do more 
pick and pop where he rolls and sprints to the wing off of those high ball screens, at that point, you can't stop him. And even when him rolling, if he does roll, I'd like to see him do more of a short roll and get to a point where he can just roll, come to a jump stop and take a jump shot. Because um, the problem is people are going to – he's going to land on people's feet more than uh, more than necessary. You know what I'm saying? So every time he lands on somebody's foot, there's an opportunity for him to – mess up his ankle or his foot or his knee or his hip, you know? So the issue with a guy that's seven foot four and 18 years old is that he might still be growing. So what happens if he grows another inch and a half and he's seven, five and a half or seven, six at that point, all perimeter play has to be, you know, null and void because of the, his ability to get injured. So we've seen this guy before. Can anybody tell me who, who, who this player was that we've seen? Just like him, KP. Uh, nope. Well, I mean, is she talking seven five? Like that's seven ball. four seven five. Yeah, yeah. Ball, uh, Manute Ball. Nope. Ralph Sampson. Ah, oh, Ralph Sampson oh, okay. was actually Ralph, Ralph, was Ralph Sampson. Ralph yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm I thought, sorry. I, mean, <laughs> I thought Ralph was six ten. Whoa, no, he was seven four. Seven four. <laughs> Maybe Ralph got... Sampson. Yeah, no, he was actually oh, no, better. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I thought, he was, I thought he was like just lean and skinny. Mark, look, how, how, how tall is is Victor? I see seven two. I see seven. Nah, four. He's seven four. Yeah, okay, he's seven four. four. Okay. Yeah, he's seven four and a quarter. I yeah, think yeah. Last and, uh, he, and he's only eighteen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ralph so Sam- I mean, l- l- let's think about it. So Ralph Sampson, um, and Ralph Sampson was athletic. Like he literally could grab the rebound. Like all, all you guys have to do is go and uh, go to YouTube and pull up uh, Ralph Sampson college highlights, and he wasn't shooting the long distance threes that that um that Victor was shooting last night. Of course, because that didn't really exist; that wasn't a thing. But had that been a thing, it would have been something that he probably would have been able to master too. He was a lot more. He was a lot. He was faster. You could see he had more agility. Um, he would block shots the same way Victor blocked shots. He punches them. You know what I'm saying? And and Ralph, when he got down low, Ralph would dunk on you. Like, if he was a foot or two away from the basket, he was dunking on you, like, hard. He was the player of the year in college, three straight years. Like, he was unstoppable. He probably was the most unstoppable guy in college basketball that we've really ever seen. Just unstoppable. You got to think about it. We had the Patrick Ewing lottery. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the draft lottery. It was the Patrick Ewing lottery. You know what I'm saying? In what was the 84? Uh, was it 84 he came out? 85, I'm sorry, 85. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at Ralph Sampson now. Um, and his yeah. his son was uh 6'10, played for Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So you gotta think about it. this guy. I'm talking about wow. Uh, he, he was a am- he was amazing. You know, I mean, he was amazing. I mean, I think in college he averaged like 17 and 11 overall. Um, I mean, he 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 he. I know he averaged over 11 rebounds. I think his college averages was 17 11. Overall, I mean, I think he finished with like 2,000 points and 1,500 rebounds. He was crazy with it. But the problem came in is when he went to the NBA and you stand land on, you start landing on people's feet because guys aren't moving out the way because they want you out of the game. All's fair in love and war. Let's remember that. So if I'm playing against this guy, I'm not moving out the way. He's going to land on my feet and he's getting, he's going to hurt himself. He's going to get out the game because I don't want to play against him because he's a menace. So last night we saw how um, he was protected. The, the kid was given a flagrant one um, technical foul because he didn't allow Victor to land in his spot. Usually that's just a foul, a common foul, but they gave him a flagrant one because they felt like he tried to hurt the kid or whatever. That's going to continue, and it's going to continue under the basket when he dunks on somebody and guys just stand there and he comes down and hurts himself. If I'm any team in the NBA, I'm going to play it smart. And I'm going to draft him, but I'm going to sit him for an entire year, and I'm going to train his agility. I'm going to get his diet right. I need to train his hips, his knees, his ankles. I need to train them so that they're stronger. I'm going to make sure he gets built in orthotics. Like, I'm this this kid right here could be the next big thing in basketball, but the problem is his height, and he has a different skeleton than everybody else. Like, people keep people keep thinking about how good he is as a player, and what they're not forgetting is – it's not, and I keep saying this, it's not the best ball players that make it. It's the best athletes. 
that play basketball, that make it. Anthony Davis has been a shell of himself. Why? Because he stayed injured. You know what I'm saying? Anytime we talk about an athlete, an elite basketball player that doesn't make it at the NBA level, it's usually because of injuries. You know? Uh, We're we talking uh, Grant Hill. We're talking Tracy McGrady. We, we, hell, we're talking Anthony Davis right now. We're talking Penny Hardaway. Hell, we're talking Tim Hardaway. You know, his knees start knocking and that game start dropping. You know, um, it, it, that's just what it is. It's about athletic ability and your ability to play in over 100 games in a nine-month span. Can he do that at that frame and the amount of travel he's taking? In Europe, he's practicing twice a day, five days a week, and playing once. In the U.S., he's playing three games a week. And one week, he might play four out of seven games, out of seven days. And he might travel across the country two times while doing that. And while, yes, they do have these chartered flights and so forth, he'll have a lot of room, but going right. up and down in that plane is a <laughs> totally different concept. It's st- it's it still it still sucks. My bad. I, I hit the wrong button. Somebody put their hand up and I hit the mute. Go ahead. Keep going, Matt. Mark. Mark. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I believe in this kid, and last night was the most excited I've been about a basketball matchup um, in a long time. Um, but I'm afraid of the inevitable, which is him getting injured. So, like I said, I would I would take him and I would train him. I would get him with track and field um, guys, um, somebody that's good at resistance training like myself. Um, when I train athletes, I train them um, in long jump t- in long jump techniques, sprinter techniques, so they learn how to run correctly. Their, their heels never touching the ground. Um, his feet are huge. Uh, he's definitely over a size twenty shoe, so he's gonna land on something, somebody's somebody's um, somebody's foot or whatever, and it's inevitable that he will get hurt. And once again, last time I said again, think about his skeleton. Think about that. Think about his skeleton. It's twice the size of ours, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? That long spine, those long limbs, he will have a high probability of getting hurt. And that's my only issue because the same way we looked at Zion and his having too much weight, we got to talk about this guy who could be injury prone um, because of his length, you know, and because, you know, because of things you mentioned. So that's my only fear. Other than that, I love him. Scoot, um, he's passing all the eye tests. He's an amazing worker. Um, I know the family. Um, they wild at times, but they 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 mean they mean good. Uh, they they love that kid. He's an <laughs> amazing are. ball player. No, they wild at times. They I mean, are. Trust me. We we uh I, I have a kid right now that I've been training since seventh grade. His name is Isaiah Collier, and um, some services have him ranked as number one in the country. He is number one in the country in the class of 2023. So we we played school. We we had to we actually beat him in the state championship. And Isaiah went to work on him. Um, so, like, the state of Georgia has some amazing players coming up. You know, uh, you're talking Ant-Man, Jabari Smith, Scoot, then Isaiah right behind him. There's some other guys in those classes as well. So, this looks good for the state of Georgia as far as basketball. But overall, this was the most entertaining young basketball game matchup since LeBron versus Carmelo, then LeBron versus Modern Day. Yeah, I I mean, I was trying to tell people um it was it was the the mellow Lenny Hook uh down at the DC running shoot that was like the biggest one that I was able to go to. And by the way, um well, I don't know. Yeah, I, he hasn't he hasn't declared where he's going yet, right? Isaiah. Cuz like if I remember, he's he is uh, what? Number 1 on ESPN, number 4 on 24/7. No, they got him as number, I think, number five or six on ESPN, even though anyone who saw it knew he had a better summer than, you know, guys listed above him. But he sat out for two months because he had a meniscus tear. So he sat out for two months, came back, and as soon as he came back, the first um, event he played in was uh, Steph Curry's camp, and he got MVP. And then uh, two weeks later, he played in the Elite 24, which is a combination of top players around the country, and he got MVP in that game as well and hit the game when he shot, hit a 30-foot a thirty foot step back for game, you know, and got MVP of that or whatever. So people are seeing his size, strength, athletic ability. 
I think his biggest thing is his passing ability. And he can score at will. He's he's a well rounded young man. Um me, I hope to get him on the West Coast, but he's also being recruited by Michigan. Um Juwan Howard's an amazing coach, amazing person. Um Cincinnati and he's high on Cincinnati. Um so he's gonna make his decision uh in November. So I'm crossing my fingers, you know. Um but no, he's he's amazing. He I think he's a game changer in regards to the game of, in regards to passing. Because in the pros you're passing the ball to guys who get paid millions of dollars to hit wide open shots. And he definitely can do that. He's probably the best passer we've seen since Jason King. Yeah, no, a um, couple of Big Ten guys uh, raved about him because uh, that's that's what I was going to say. Like, I, I heard Michigan, but I'm um, like talking like the Deshaun Tates and, and a couple of the people who are more Big Ten oriented. Um, so, yeah, no, I was, I, I'm a huge fan. I, I'm hoping that he, he does. Uh, you know, go to an actually prevalent program, uh, and I think he'll probably uh, be what top top six, seven, eight if he develops correctly. So, I'm mean, huge. Let, let's let's make sure you tap in uh, to Mark here so we can pump up Isaiah uh, Collier, who, again, like this is just another example of why you should listen. I've already learned three things uh, today. Like I I was trying to find a comp for Victor. Ralph Sampson never crossed my mind. I, I had actually looked at a. A couple other people who I thought, you know, would be similar in game if they were just bigger. Uh, but, yeah, no, now I'm looking at some Ralph Sampson videos. So think about it, Chris. Think about it, Chris. The reason Ralph – think about it. First first four years in the league or whatever. He was 20 – Perennial MVP. He was yeah. a – not an MVP, but a, a perennial all-star. What was he, 20 and 10? Uh, 20 and 11. four years? Until his fourth year when he got hurt. He got hurt. His he got hurt. And for the rest of his career, he was, he was injured. Yeah. Yeah. Is the right. same exact size as Victor. That is that is that is that is good. I remember his brother uh, in Minnesota too because they they put out Maryland um, in the Big yep. Ten. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Go, Go Terps uh, will lose again this year. Uh, we we've lost big, pretty much every year uh, since Roy Williams, uh, not Roy Williams, um, the other Williams left. Uh, Malika, Sean uh, with the W is here. Nick Stan, Jeek, and Micah. Are up here. If you want a mic, go ahead and request it. Uh, got about another 20 minutes of the show going. Want to thank everybody for dropping in on your hump day. Uh, shout outs down below. Uh, K. Dot Lou, if you want some uh, 9450 women's basketball offseason news, make sure you uh, shoot K. Dot Lou a follow. We got Evan Townsend of Project Spurs in the building. Uh, Jose Rolo of 77 Spaces come through. Uh, and then, you know, Star Wars like Verl Nico. Uh, Danny D's been up here. I see Shaco down there. And a big shout-out to Jackie, who's mad that I didn't put the Los Angeles Lakers in the poll uh, for potential NBA champions. Full disclosure, this poll was given to GMs of the league. This is the top four results. That is why I use these teams. Uh, not that I think the Lakers are going to win the finals. I, I don't. I, I really don't. And you know what? It kind of makes me smile. Uh, and like I am smiling, I am sure Sean with the W is smiling. We're going to get to him, uh, as he can tell y'all, don't sleep on New York. But first, we'll go to Micah, because I think Micah has something uh, he wants to ask uh, to Mark ab about Victor or something else in the NBA. Micah, go ahead. You hate to see it. You hate to see the hand up. You know, the, the, they're modeling the decorum, the respect, and then, like, you go to them and you get silenced. Um, so we'll go to Sean. What's up, Sean? How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm just typing something. Uh, so uh, it's okay. You or, can tell yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, so, one, it's been a long time since I've been on here, so it's good to see everyone again. Um, I didn't realize that the show went Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and also, which was actually smart because, you know, you the silly season is just, you know, silly, um, being the NBA offseason. Um, and also, I would uh, look at, like, hey, I'm going to get on Hoover Spaces, and then it would be like 12.15. I'm like, damn it, I missed it. Um, I'm... I'm so like regarding the Knicks game last night. Like, listen, it's preseason. We went four and on preseason last year, so I am not looking into a damn thing that happens before the season starts. Um, although I find it, I do find it interesting that um, 
there are so many people that were like against the. Let me say this: you know, the the the, the Knicks have been slandered for never. What was the, what is the uh, what is the common refrain about about the Knicks when it comes to free agency? Nobody wants to go to New York. That's been said about us for years. Nobody wants to go there. And then the Knicks managed to sign the preeminent point guard on the market who just came from the Western Conference Finals. And instead of the narrative being, wow, the Knicks actually convinced someone to come there after a 37-win season, it's, oh, well, it's just because it's, 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 it's the president of the basketball operations' godson. They overpaid him. This is stupid. Da, 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 da. It's like we can't win. And then a, point, and that, a lot of it came from our own fan base. And I saw a lot of these clowns yesterday on the timeline, like, yo, Jalen Brooks is really good. I'm like, thank you for telling me that you only watch Knicks basketball and nothing else. Like, we've been telling you that this kid is good. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays out. Uh, I haven't given my official stance about the Donovan Mitchell trade or not trade on hoop spaces. So I'll say this. We dodged a bullet. Um, we could not have afforded to give that pig in Utah – everything you wanted. And I say, I call him a pig because he's greedy and he always wants more. And he just loves to roll around in his own slop and more, 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 more. Cleveland was in a better position to make the trade than we could. Uh, Zach Lowe had said, and I agree with him, the difference is Cleveland had, Cleveland literally had traded everything they could. It was like, all we can give you are these three picks and these two swaps, like in terms of draft capital. That's literally all we have. So you can't say give me more because by rule, we can't give you anything else. But since the Knicks had seven first round picks over the last, over the next seven years, no, 11 first over the next seven years, it would have been very easy for Danny to be like, and I say that to everyone who thinks that we messed up because we didn't make the deal, we just made the deal. It seems like if we gave him three picks and two swaps, if we offered three picks and two swaps, Daniel would have said, I want a fourth. And we offered a fourth, Daniel would have said, I want a fifth. And, he's, and he said, if we own fifth, I want a sixth. Because I believe that you're desperate and you'll give me what I want because you're the Knicks. So um, I am glad that the Knicks did not make that trade because we would have had to give up way more than anyone else would have simply because we had it. So – that is the last you're going to hear me litigate the Donovan Mitchell trade. I'm looking forward to the season. I am now a partial Knicks season ticket holder. I'll be at the Garden next to my good friend Cedric Shine. And looking forward to looking forward to actually talking about basketball and not trades and fake trades and top 10 lists and top 100 lists and who is him and who is not him and all that good stuff. And the Suns gonna be a nine seed. And I have shot Chris into. I have shot Chris with that hot take. So I'll just I'll just host his show until he comes back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's hold uh, it down for Chris. I I I, I had I had a phone call. <laughs> Um, we was about to run the show. Yeah, was no, he it, was about to get the mic back. I, I don't know if it could get any worse than Sean calling Danny Ainge King Lennon from Angry Birds. Oh my god! Uh, but uh, I I I agree. <laughs> I agree that uh, yeah, if if they said hey, we got three first and two swaps, he'd have been like, yo, give me a fourth. I 100 percent agree. And if we open the fourth, it would have been the fifth. If we open the fifth, it would have been six. Um, but uh, anyway. Like I said, uh, um, Suns will be the ninth seed. Go argue with your auntie. <laughs> um, really, the ninth seed. All right, look, again, if you had um, Danny Ainge being called King Leonard from uh, Angry Birds, you know, let me know because that was funny. And if you don't think that was funny, um, then you, you, there's probably something wrong with you. Like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Angry Birds is, is funny. Like the movie, but the, the never mind. The movie was I right too. The movie was I, right. but but Chris, you be hating on a lot of movies though. So I, I, I don't know what. Okay. You, what See, you, what I, you, I, I don't. You know. I don't. <laughs> Give me a movie that I hate on. Uh, Lion King. You just hate um, on Friday the other day. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't hate on Friday. I said how high is just better. Like it, it, see, like no, like, again, no, no one with the clapback. 
How high is a better movie than Friday? Except no, that it's, it's except that, except that it's not. It but is. you try, you try, you try, you tried. Nah, <laughs> it is. It's infinitely more rewatchable, right? The the initial question. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. not. Like, no, no. no. no you really yes. Lost. I have no. Ne- I have watched Friday eight hundred times. I've watched How High like nine. Bro, I feel sorry if you watched it eight hundred times, bro. That's like sixteen hundred. I question oh, your back. take. I question your taste outside of food. To be right. honest with you, oh, I, no, I outside of food, outside of I question your takes. Crispy trolling. Crispy trolling. You know, crispy be- trolling. I, I'm not like literally not. Mm. Okay. It, it, it's good engagement farming, good sir. It, it, it's great engagement you know, farming. You see, so people round of applause to you, good people sir. People say that, but if that was the case, then I would have larger engagement numbers. No, no, because the engagement farming doesn't always it doesn't translate, which is weird. It's very, very strange. But it's it's the great. I, I enjoy the engagement farming, though. I, I definitely do. Okay. All right. Apparently, I am engagement farming. Um, yeah, I I still need more engagement. So we'll go to Knicks for clicks, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, Mark, hop in here, like, cause I know you're you're being quiet on this. How high or Friday? I'm gonna have to go with Friday. Um, but how high is a is a better like movie as far as context and and script and everything else? But Friday is iconic, man. It's iconic. Like Chris Tucker, fresh face Chris Tucker, iconic, man. Come on, bro. All right. Come on. All right. Hey, look, I mean, I can be wrong. It's just like I'm not. Y'all are. But, but no, no. You no could that's be, it's, wrong, it's not that you could be wrong. It's that you are. Well, I'm and not. It's okay. And it's okay, Chris. We can't but I'm get not. them all like, right. But, we, but the we love you just the same. But, but, Chris, you're, you but, but Chris, same, you're missing Chris. the point. You're missing the point here. The point and, is you are wrong. the point? You are wrong. That's the point. You, you know what? I'm a. I'm gonna put that in a poll. I like that. Am I missing the point? I mean, you miss the point often, but you know it happens. You know we don't listen. We all we don't bet a thousand. I said the Knicks were gonna win forty five games last year. Like oh, I, I, I was wrong. Tried to know? tell you that wasn't gonna happen. Derek Rose wasn't healthy. You also Just... did. You also did tell me that um um. R.J. Barrett's comp is Chris Middleton, and I told you it was Jimmy Butler. And I just read the other day that RJ has literally out of his mouth said he's leaning into the Jimmy Butler mold. So I was right about that. He's well. all he wants. And he's you're way right. more Chris Middleton than he is. He's not about. Chris Middleton. So you're wrong again. Just eat it. It's okay. Like, like no, okay. no. See, like, you okay. can listen to him and he can say he's okay. leaning into his Jimmy Butler all he wants. When I see him play, I don't see Jimmy Butler. You're the only person that sees Chris Middleton. I'm Literally not you. the only person. Like, I'll die on the hill, bro. Like, okay. right. I'm just saying, Chris, it's oh, listen, it, I know the three scariest words in the English language on the internet are I was wrong. I understand that. I want you, I want better for you. I want you to embrace that you are not perfect. I want you to embrace oh, I, that sometimes you mess up. And I want you to embrace that sometimes your takes are terrible. I understand. I used to have terrible takes. I still have some terrible takes here and there, but it's okay. I am here for you. I want better for you. So listen, you can say how high is better than Friday. The problem that take is, is just inherently untrue, but I will learn you for you to understand how much of a masterpiece Friday is. It's not that how high is a great movie. movie. How high has one of the most iconic characters in black cinema, period. Iconic, but guess what? It's like Deion Sanders said the other day. Deion Sanders is a Hall of Famer. And he said, listen, not everyone's gold jacket is the same. Uh, well, jacket. You may well, be in the Hall of Fame, but your gold jacket and my gold jacket ain't the same. Money Mike is an, is an iconic character. He is not Smokey. <laughs> Smokey is beyond. Oh, like, so, it, some people. Levels. Some... Smokey is levels. About Some people Mike. are asking what the context is. All right, so there was a picture. The question is, out of all these movies, which one are you going to watch the most, right? Like, And for me, out of that list of movies, it was how high. It wasn't even close. Like, the only competition was Friday. And to me, how high being funnier, being better written, is better. Like, I don't get it. That's just me. That's all how I'm many right. quote? How Friday has more quotables than how high. Again, I am not arguing it's it's 
place in like war and culture, right? I'm understanding your argument and agreeing with your argument. No, you're not My because you just is, said it's better written, and I'm like, how is it better written when the other because movie has it was more, written to be stupidly how, but, funny? On, let me finish. Let me finish. But the other movie has more quotables. The other movie has more lines that people remember, more lines that hit, more lines that people use to this day. I could say lot, like I could literally, we could host a space, we could host a space. And my response to the questions could literally be just be lines from how, how from Friday out of context. And how many times do we say? And for example, we'll be say I'll say like for example that I said the sons of the ninth seed, and someone could say I could I'll remember that. And you know what I would say? Remember, write it out, take a picture of it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and everybody knows where that's from. Everybody, everybody, find me a line of how high I can do that too. Get them. Get them. A good one, but it's not. It's not. Get on. That's a that's a good one, but it's not. But that's what you name me one. You just said give me one. I gave you one. Yes. Like I I delivered. I gave you what no. you asked for. I gave you one. I have plenty more. I have plenty more in the right. clip. We where, got you, where, where do you want me to go? We got a couple of hands up. We're gonna go to the right, hand. Go ahead. Uh, breezy, breeze. Back, What's baby. up? I'm back. It's too been too long. I'm back. <laughs> what up, everybody? Uh, shout out to everybody up here. Shout out Stan. Shout out Hoop Spaces. He's still one of the uh, best voices on uh, uh, on the, on Twitter. Period. Uh, Chris, I like how you run your spaces. Um, it's I really only tapped in for this this Friday versus how hot thing because while Chris likes hills and I can I can tell some hills is like just not. A high as a leap than other hills. Like if 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 currently if it's on TV and it's a TV guide, right? And it says Friday and how high. I'm I, I'm switching over to how high. I'm clicking how high first. More initial reaction. However, I completely understand that it is culturally wrong to say that it's a better movie than Friday. It's just one of the things that you just have to understand. But it but, is a but, but, movie. But I, I'm not going to lie. You, you do a lot of hills, Chris, and I hate your food takes most of, like, 99% of them. But sometimes your hills, I'd be like, this is not a very high hill. It's not, like, a very far way down. And this one is not a very far way down. But I understand that it's just wrong to say out loud, and I appreciate the fact that you don't care. You said it anyway. All right, man. I appreciate you for for the brevity. Like that's what we need here. We need brevity. Rolo, you heard something? Yeah, you came up here with the quickness. What you got, man? Man, I'm just here to collect my receipts, Chris. What's going on, brother? I haven't seen you in a minute, man. I got to get back up here with my Chris. You know, football season showed up, Chris. You know, and I, I'm a big NFL nut. I love football especially a Saints fan, so I don't want to talk about it right now. We'll talk about it another day, Chris. Uh, but at the same token, did you see my Pelicans yesterday? Did you see, I did. Did you see Zion back? Did you see I him? did. I just want you to know, Chris, you were one of the first people to know that I've been talking about the Pelicans for how long now? And now all of oh. a sudden, they got a lot of – we got more fans, man. I'm telling you, from <laughs> East Coast, West Coast, North, South, I appreciate it, though. I really do. I really do appreciate the extra fandom. But I've been on them boys for a long time, and I'm excited to see this season. We super deep. Dice and Daniels look good yesterday in the last few minutes that he played. I love that little draft pick that we had with him. Uh, even Devontae Graham, what a shocker. He decides to play basketball only in the preseason. Hopefully we'll see what he looked like in the regular season. But to me, he's a preseason merchant. He has to show me something more. Um, Zion, of course, looks electric per, per Zion. I'm not really too worried about Zion. He's going to be him. Uh, C.J. McCollum looks good in the offense. We did a lot of uh, dribble handoff uh, packages yesterday. I loved it. I loved the pick and roll schemes we was running. Um, looking uh, typical Willie Green type style offense. I love the uh, fast pace movement. Um, I mean, I'm just excited. I'm really excited for Herb Jones. I think Herb Jones takes that leap that a lot of people, you know, of course, with B.I., C.J. And, and Zion, of course. But I, I'm looking at the other guys like the Jackson Hayes and the, and, the, and the Herb Jones, see what their development was like from last year to this year, seeing how big of a jump they can make. And Herb, I think he's going to be one of the top three and D players. Top five to me next year would be a top five three and D player in the, in the NBA would be Herb Jones to me. Um, as well as um, Trey Murphy, whenever he gets healthy, that's going to be a good little roster. But we're super deep, man. I call the Pelicans wings are us, and we still are. 
still got a bunch of wings, still got a bunch of uh, athletes over there. Uh, can't wait wait to see the whole uh, season uh, play out. Jose Alvarado, man, I just can't wait, man. It's an exciting time to be a Pelican fan, Chris. Most definitely. You know, you missed it earlier, and I said, like, the, the most important Pelican, um, and I think, the, and I wasn't trolling our engagement for him, and I love that uh, term, by the way, is Herb Jones um, starting at shooting guard so that they can relieve the defensive pressure for C.J. McCollum and Brandon Ingram guarding the, the hardest guard one through three. No, that's a right. fact. Like, you know, they run into the Clippers. You know, you, you will see Herb Jones guard John Wall for six minutes, PG for eight minutes, and Kawhi for 18, right? And, like, that type of defensive versatility, which is the same type of versatility that, that Matisse Thibel has, um, coupled with the fact that he can hit open threes. That's a fact. <laughs> is is a game changer. So I'm I'm high on Herb Jones. And he's not scared to put it on the floor either, Chris. Like, if he has to, he would make that drop. He get that corner and the uh, defender close out too tough. He will swing it through and, and, tr- and try to make a play. Now, if he was going to make it at the basket or if the uh, center closes out, he'll make the pass for that center to make that easy cut. Like, we're a pass, pass first organization at this point right now. And I'm loving the way it's looking, man. But Herb Jones, yeah, you're right, Chris. It's it, you can't find nothing more valuable than that in an NBA team or NBA roster right now. You really can't. And I just want to allow the league to take a second to understand that Trey Murphy still hasn't played basketball. <laughs> we're yeah. gonna go to Sean for his reaction. We got Malika. We're at twelve. We're gonna get ready for the closeout. So we'll get everybody's final take on the NBA. I'll give you the stats uh, to look out for, or the games to look out for tonight. We'll start with Sean. Uh, Sean, you've got a lot of work, man. First, uh, since you're back, officially congratulations on becoming a member of the Knicks wall. Uh, you're going to have dope content there. You got live from the Mecca here. Knicks Film uh, School. Knicks Film School. My bad. Knicks Film School. There's too many of y'all, man. Totally. Like, look, Sean is right about three things. Um, everybody either loves the Knicks or hates the Knicks. Like, that's just a fact. Like, there's no middle ground. And, like, I don't hedge on that either. Uh, because you either love to hate and talk about them or you love them. So he's right about that. Two, no matter what you say, New York is the mecca of basketball. Like, I, I totally get every other city you claim Seattle's dope. And I think Seattle's a better basketball city than, like, L.A. But, like, it's the mecca. Like, no, you don't say mecca and all of a sudden, like, you know, Austin, Texas or Dallas, Texas – pops in your head like you think new york you see the skyline even if you've never been there he's right about that uh and he's also right uh that he has the dopest mixed content with him cedric shine and just says sean go ahead what you got for your closing take i have a poll i have a poll in the jumbotron and i would like all of you to vote on it um and i asked the poll because i was in a space earlier not i was in the locker room earlier uh, last week, and we we're discussing the Pelicans, and <clears throat> and the reason I, I the reason why I post this is because um, everyone last year everyone acted like we were the worst team in the league, and we were just absolutely god awful terrible, and how our young and how our young kids aren't all that good, and we don't got that much young talent, and you know the RJ situation is that third, right? I just well, didn't play our young talent, Sean. Go ahead. Um, okay, right. No, I and I agree with you on that one. I agree. We should have played them more. Um, that's because our head coach is a war criminal, but I digress. Um, but everyone loves the loves the Pelicans young players. And they got some good kids. I'm not even I'm not even knocking them, right? Everyone loves them. Loves them. And I say to myself, how is how our like our players we won more games than the Pelicans last year? Because we won 37 and the Pels won 36. The difference is 37 was only good enough for 11th in the conference and 36 wins was good enough for 9th in the West. Um, so I ask, if you literally just took – and now, and now you're adding Zion, everyone's like, yo, the Pels might do something third. And here. So I ask, if you take Zion and literally just put him on the Knicks, would they win 50? I've heard people say the Pels go win 50. I'm not saying it's far-fetched, but if you literally took Zion and put him on the Knicks, would they win 50? Because if you don't think they win 50, that supporting cast was better than the supporting cast 
in New Orleans that everyone is raving about this year. It's just an I, interesting I exercise. I disagree, Sean. I disagree for that point. Number one, I've been saying this, that the Pelicans will be a top five seed since probably – since I started, probably like four or five minutes, uh, months ago, I've been saying the Pelicans will be a top five seed next year, uh, this year coming in. Also, it was uh, I don't think that y'all have a better roster when it comes down to having C.J. McCollum and Brandon Ingram, just them two alone. I don't know if you want to say Julius Randle compares to a B.I. or a, uh, you know what I'm saying, the Pelicans started off 1-12 last year because of injuries. Um, and then later in the back half of the season, they started catching fire, started getting the rhythm, rhythm a.k.a. people started getting healthy. And they started buying in the Willie Green system. Um, it's just more about the coaching and the and the system, and of course the young talent and players and development that David Griffin has got into the program. Um, but I, I honestly think that Zion is a better. He's a he's a different maker. But the Pelicans was winning last year and doing what they was doing without Zion, you know, and doing all of the things they did without their number one star, their number one player. So adding that guy this year, I don't know. I think that it does take us beyond that. And I think that. The pieces that the Pelicans have may be slightly better. I like Emmanuel quickly and R.J. Barrett for you guys. Um, you know, y'all just got Brunson, uh, you know, the, the Mitchell Robinson, and, uh, you know, uh, your boy Obi. So, y'all yeah, got a decent squad. I don't just think that y'all talent is just all around better just than what the New Orleans Pelicans have. I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say that it's better. I just find it interesting that, Everyone loves the talent of the 36 win team, but no one likes the talent of the 37 win team. <laughs> that's that, that's what I'm that's, that's the point. It's because of Tibbs. Like, come on, man. Got to say it's a different it's, coach. No, it's because we're the Knicks. Let, it, let's keep it a buck. Bro, it's because it, we're the Knicks, and everybody likes to make fun of the Knicks. If, if, Not if, me, man. I'm a mellow fan, so I rocked with the Knicks for a good seven years for sure. All right, let's uh, let's get Malika in here. Malika, your final thought of the day. What's your take? Final thought, I don't hate the Knicks. Um, I just dislike some Knicks fans. Some. Um, and some a whole lot. I just like most like of them. Sean is so cool with me. You know, Sean and Cedric exactly. are cool people. You know, Knicks Dan, you seem like you're a good person. But some Knicks fans, and I'm not saying no names, got issues. Um, next, I will, I, I'm looking forward to I, – I, I said this yesterday. I'm looking forward to this season – Besides my Nets, looking forward to the Clippers, um, looking forward to a lot of the West Coast, the East Coast is stacked. So I'm look, I just love that I turn on the TV, turn on NBA app, and their games every day now. So um, I'm just excited about that. And, um, yeah, that's I, outside of the hot takes that are already given. Now, School Henderson, I know everyone's talking about the seven. I don't even know how to say his name yet. So I'm not going to yeah. Wimbanyana. The seven for four. Yeah, he looks he looks dynamic and great. And people keep I keep seeing in my timeline another Chet Holmgren. I don't think so. I think it's dynamic. But Scoot Henderson, man, Scoot a, a team would be lucky to even grab Scoot Henderson. So you know, I'm and this, this and the sweepstakes to to bomb and to tank. I see Utah and Spurs. Um, I don't know if anybody in Oklahoma if you know if they get rid of Shy because. You know, like they have to trade shy. Um, but that's about it. That's all I got. We didn't even get to that. Um, that was that was a question in our group chat and and I'm a, I'm yo shy. We're closing out. So yeah. that's why and you don't have shy. each other Friday. So that's gone. why I closed out with it. Yeah. Shy is gone. Like Sam Presti has gotta be salivating looking at Victor. Um, Jay, the what kind of tech support? We'll go to you. Thanks for popping up here. Uh, you got a good uh, minute. What you got? All right. What up, everybody? Appreciate you, Chris, for letting me up. Sean's argument is, is disingenuous because after the CJ trade, the Pelicans were on a 44 to 46 win pace. And, he, and he's right about the overall win total. But after the CJ trade, they were 10 games better over an 82 game pace than the Knicks are, right? And so that's why adding Zion, they don't win 50 games because they're not better than this current iteration of the Pelicans team. And Tom Thibodeau was a war criminal and he wouldn't play Zion because Zion doesn't remember having a team mobile sidekick and having a MySpace top eight, right? Because those are the only kind of players Tibbs likes to play for 38 minutes a night. Um, I wanted. I, 
six two. Oh man, the Bro, Knicks would take Willie Green in a heartbeat. Oh, I know, I know. Um, there's a lot. There's uh, a lot of falsities in there. But I'm gonna let you cook. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was spitting all. I was spitting all facts. That was all. That that was just oh, math. Uh, that was just math. Um, but no. Uh, Victor looked great. Scoot looked great. Um, I if Chet doesn't injure himself in that pro am in Seattle, I think Presty does have to trade Shy in order to to tank for King Victor. But now that Chet is out for the year, all he needs is for Josh Giddy to pull a toenail and for Shy to like have an eyelash fall in his eye, oh. and both of them are going to sit for like two months. That is... Just to make sure they're good. You know what I mean? You know what? That, that, is, that is spoken just like a Los Angeles Grizzlies and a Memphis Lakers fan. Just the salty. You're telling me Josh oh. Giddy is not going to be put on the DNP list because just, of a... Oh, you just of wish a, the Lakers had eyelash. done it. That's all. <laughs> you wish the Lakers had did it. You wish that the Lakers looked into the to future crystal ball and had shelved Anthony Davis and LeBron James and let Westbrook drag you the, the carcass of the Lakers to the playoffs like he did the Wizards. Mm. Nah. West, Westbrook nah, and not really. none backcourt is nasty. <laughs> oh, not I, really. What I really would have wished the Lakers would have done was not trade the two usable wings on their roster for a point guard, then sign another point guard, and then go get another point guard. So we looked at that roster, <laughs> what was it, a month ago, was like, man, they got a lot of wings. They, woo, they got yeah. a lot of wings. Now you look at the roster, it's like, you have four point guards. If and none Jackie, of them are good. Jackie is still in the building. She does not like this talk. about. And they're the still going to be better than the Suns. Oh. No, no, they're not. I don't know. Dude, like we're not, gonna have to get into not. the West Coast. Uh Sorry. next week next week, ladies and gentlemen, uh we go back to five days a week, uh starting on Monday. Um so we we'll be that we'll be getting into to more prognostication uh and, and we'll be listening to more of Jay the Wakandan tech support uh try to explain how how they can still make this Russell Westbrook trade happen to give his Memphis Lakers a shot uh of making the play in. Uh I wanna make I sure want, I don't want that. <laughs> I know, I know you don't, but it's gonna happen. Like that—that's what I'm saying. Like, just buy into it now. Uh, Rolo, we'll give you some time. Thirty seconds. Give us your final take. Uh, Nick Stan, and then we'll close out with Mark Edwards. Everybody, thank you. Well, last thing I say is, man. Of course, the like I said with the uh, seven footer last night, seven four guy when buying y'all, I can't pronounce his name, so I'm not finna do it. And then also the uh, the scoop. Them guys look amazing. Look like the top two picks. Um, I can't wait to see what they look like. Of course, like y'all say at the top, just going to run down Zion returns. I appreciate it. Uh, I can't wait to see my guy on the court. Last time we seen him, it was 27 points a game, 61% from the field. Can't wait to see it. The Knicks, you guys looking good. I like what I seen last night. Play your young players, play your young players, play your young players, and the Knicks will be fine. Um, that's all I got. All right. Appreciate it. Nick Stan, you're up. Final take of the day. Might be. Yeah, hate you hate it. I just want to use his time to say Jackson State by forty. <laughs> Jackson State by forty. Put it on the board. Uh, Mark Edwards, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you shoot Mark a follow. Uh, tied into the game deeper than than you understand. Uh, what is your final take? What do we get? Look forward to uh, in preseason action. What are you uh, What are you looking at as a trainer, and what do you got to uh, you know impart on us in words of wisdom? Go ahead, say, say it one more time. I, it, 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 the app cut out on me. Oh, uh, Jackson your, State your, by last, your last take. What are you uh, What are you looking for either tonight? What do you got going off for the preseason? Um, and just general relative words of wisdom. Um, I hate preseason because the guy the teams don't take it seriously enough. Um, I wish preseason was longer. Uh, so guys can really get into a rhythm like we're seeing these, you know, these are bad preseason games, really, in my opinion. It's not really showing us anything about the teams. It's, you know, they're they're fiddling around with lineups and all that. But I'm happy NBA basketball is back. Um, and I guess, like I said, my last thing on Mignogna is, 
you know, that Ralph Sampson comp, people are going to be like, that's kind of crazy, but it's the same exact player without a jump shot, without a deep three. That's it. And Ralph was better. So I, I'm curious to see how this plays out. I am a fan of the kid. You know, he's part of my, my family training tree. So um, I, I love it. And also, you know, um, shout out to Scoot Henderson. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for that young man and his family. You know, that was an amazing game. Like I said, that was the best, um, I think, um, not pro, but, you know, pro, you know, next up type of uh, matchup that we've seen since LeBron versus Carmelo, in my yes, opinion. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, nah, it, it, it bodes well, too, right, that, that we have two phenomenal talents. And then if you look behind them, several other phenomenal talents, um, because we, we are going to lose these phenomenal talents in the next four or five years. And, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to go by quick. Uh, it always does, right? It always does. There'll be, there'll be a last man standing. And, and I think uh, we all understand that it's, it's probably going to come down uh, to Steph and KD uh, as to the last two of our era, as we view as our era. So we are going to be looking – at a whole new world of basketball. And hopefully you'll be looking at it and listening to it here. I want to thank everybody who's stopped by. I appreciate it. Uh, Building into season two, Monday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m., giving you the basketball coverage you want. Make sure you head over to hoopspaces.com. I'll be hitting out the rest of the Atlantic Division previews sometime today, early tomorrow. And remember, uh, head over to slamgoods.com and pick up two Two hoodies. That's what KP wants you to do because he's right. Whether whether your girl or your guy's gonna gonna take it is not the question. The question is when, and it is when you least expect it. And you're gonna want that hoodie. So buy two. Use promo code Hoopspaces to save fifteen percent. And if you really want to uh, go down history, do what I do and pick up the Rewind series and look how they they wrote about basketball. You know, twenty years ago, I picked up the uh, Kobe Bryant trilogy. I'm going to get them framed. I was thinking about maybe picking up a jersey uh, and getting it framed. So, you know, that, that, that I think I'll do that. That's pretty – that's a good idea. All right. Hey, I've got nothing else for you but the schedule. Today, five games. Indiana at Charlotte at 7. Cleveland at Philadelphia in Philadelphia at 7. That will be on NBA TV. Toronto will be at Boston, and Dallas will be at Oklahoma City. at is 7.30 and 8 p.m. And then 10 p.m., those Phoenix Suns look to rebound after losing to the Adelaide 36s against the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, that'll be on uh, NBA TV. Knife seed incoming! <laughs> third, third uh, <laughs> Thursday, uh, the Abu Dhabi games, Milwaukee, Atlanta. You're going to want to watch it, 12 p.m., NBA TV. Then we got a dope night. Uh, the Miami Heat and Brooklyn Nets, 7.30 ESPN. The Adelaide 36ers, everybody's favorite team, looks to go undefeated against the Oklahoma City Thunder at 8 p.m. Make sure you pull up and you shoot a follow to the Adelaide 36ers Twitter account and make sure that you pump them up because, like, if they beat Oklahoma City, like, we got we got to have them go 4-0. We need them to win uh, so Mark's dream can come true. And, and teams start taking preseason a little bit more seriously. Uh, Orlando at San Antonio. Uh, look, if you are a Spurs fan, I'm going to just say I'm sorry. Um, but what you are about to go through is nothing like I had to go through in the process. Y'all still probably going to win 20 games, so you shouldn't feel too bad. Uh, they take on Paolo Bancaro tonight, 8 p.m. or Thursday, 8 p.m. Uh, and then Ranana plays Portland uh, at 10 p.m., uh, and then Los Angeles gets to look at what could have been if they traded for Rudy Gobert as he looks to make his debut uh, Thursday night in Los Angeles next to uh, Anthony Edwards. There you go. Uh, that's the schedule for the next two days. Next show, October 7th, 10 a.m. here, Twitter Spaces. Appreciate everybody. The Peace. Spurs won five championships of my lifetime. F them. Big moments to the projects. It's about time. Bring your ass down to the... I feel sorry for them.
Pop Please. going through a rebuild. I don't know. They'll he, be back. Go over that. They're getting I'm... Victor a scoop. They'll be back. Watch those Man, scoop, scoop number one. Scoop number I one in the drive. Pop ready to go watch. through a rebuild, man. How old is Pop, man? I watched those motherfuckers raise the Larry O'Brien trophy at center court at MSG. I don't feel that nutter for them. And that is from God. That's from how high. You got there, one, is, there you go. I don't feel sorry for them because they'll be back. They're getting one of those top picks. Them in Oklahoma City and the Jazz, they're going to be fighting. There's, I don't think teams are going to tank that hard like they are. So much salt. Just salt spread everywhere. Damn right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Friday, 10 a.m. Uh, if you missed out on any of the show, head over to YouTube. Click on subscribe, powered by audiolabs.io. Promo code hoopspaceslamgoods.com. See, I still got it in. Peace out. Danny Ainge will have no.